Yes, yes, exactly. Un, deux, trois. I'm, I'm dating myself with the whole Hot Shots part two. Man, those movies are fucking great. I really liked all the uh, Leslie Nielsen movies, too. Oh, my gosh. Police he was, Squad. He was good. Naked Gun. I don't think any of that stuff could, would fly today, though. What a Dude. legend. All those, like, O.J. Simpson was in those movies. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, like, he used to be the shit before he killed his wife. Yep. <laughs> Allegedly. Oh, he wrote a book if I did it. And then, like, the if was tiny and crossed out. <laughs> okay, here we are. D&D. &D, where we last left off. Did you save before you close it down? Oh, yeah, you did. Okay. Uh, I, I booted up a auto save, which should be the most current. So, from, I think wherever we left off, it should be accurate. Uh, I, I just, I had trouble making a little poison arrow counter and... It saved it, so I'm happy I don't have to redo that. All right, I still need to open all my PDFs and stuff, so you guys can continue doing what you were doing. Um, we're just bullshitting. Just bullshitting. Hey, somebody's still missing. Yeah, see ya. Diamond said it was my turn. I will proceed to start digging about two and a half feet down into the same pan in front of me. Should we... Diamond is smoking. That's why we're missing him, Ninja. Still. He, he likes got... his cigs. He's got the world's longest cigarette. Does he have one of those cigarette holders cigarette from the 20s? <laughs> those don't actually make the cigarette itself longer, though. No, this is like a novelty extra long <laughs> cigarette. Um, the extra long, yeah. I just got cr crashed out of steam again. Fuck. Why must fate conspire against us? It's a conspiracy, I say. Have you seen the new uh, Pathfinder game? Uh, I didn't look into it. Does it look good? It's fun. Uh, have you have you played the first one? I did a little bit. I couldn't get into it. Uh, so far, the story is more fun, I think. But I'm early in the game. I don't know what it is about that kind of game. Like I always I always think that I want to play them and then I'll I'll buy it and then I'll I'll play it for like an hour and then I never touch it again. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Yeah. Something about that kind of game. I really I think I want to play it, but then I never actually do. I start like what is the other one? Divinity, I think. Um, Tyranny. I played a bunch of Tyranny, and that's that same kind of game. Uh, I, Divinity like, Origin. Isometric. I think going. You're back, Diamond. I started the game like 10 different times with different people, you know? So, Diamond, how long is your novelty cigarette? Usually only 8 minutes if I'm not distracted by something <laughs> else. 8 light minutes? My goodness, that is long. <laughs> Do you light it with the sun? No, I just enjoy it. I was making a joke about how you have like a really long novelty cigarette that you smoke. Yeah. <laughs> he grows his own tobacco in the back here. Uh, well, I the wish... server was up for a minute. Are you guys connected or no? I can't tell. Well, uh, I'm trying, trying to get back. In. It I'm... looks like Long and and Creus and, and Diamond are all in. Yep. So maybe that's I'm, good. I'm I'm still plugging away. It's been stable so far. Oh, diamond. Oh, no, everything's good. Okay. Just waiting on it to load in everything. So, Morg. Morg the Mole Barbarian. He knows that there is a big vaginal beastie that lives beneath the sand and uh, begins digging furiously into the sand. Uh, wait, what? Hey, see ya. What's up? Wait, wait, vaginal beastie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we fought it last week, remember? It's got tentacles. I, I know. I, I just joined at the wrong time. <laughs> or did you remember join at the right time? I know. I, I just joined it's at the, the new wrong Dungeon time. and Dragon <laughs> anti edition. 
Here, I'll. Uh, yeah, this monster really is kind of hentai ass. I'll link you the stream and I'll I'll zoom in on. I'm it. already in it. All right, there you go. So Morg is currently digging for this thing. I might have. You're to digging for it? Too. What? Yeah, he wants to find it. Morg. <laughs> it retreated yeah. after everybody threw oil in its mouth. Uh, yeah, so they drop loads in it. <laughs> so we're just chasing down a CR-22 launcher? Wait, what now? <laughs> well, you don't want that 100 damage to go to waste, right? <laughs> they want the level up to level 12 instantly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there so Morg go. digs. The creature lurking beneath the sand feels his digging, feels the pitter-patter of the feet of the people milling about, feels the slithering of Traxxas's drake form. Is anybody else doing stuff? Are we still in uh, uh, initiative? My digging, yeah, yeah, it's going to be a full turn action. You are in the process of digging a hole. <laughs> I still have my ready to action, as so, does uh, Dagger Maw. Yo, what's up, Diamond? Get your ass over into this room. <laughs> I'm already in the room. No. Oh, you no, mean the room you're in? Room. Okay, so you're being called to come into this side room. Do you dare run across the dangerous sandy floor? Sure, why not? <laughs> you got mirror image, you'll be all right, huh? Wait, <laughs> I mean... Okay, so you and your mirror images haul ass across the, the room here. Your feet slapping across the ground, making little vibrations. Does the creature Gosh, lash out at you? Apparently not. All right, Ooh. you make it into the side room here. I'll give you the little description of the side room. So here you are standing in this oddly shaped room. You had to come in through this, uh, this door here. Um, this was broken into, right? Yes. So that's why this one's got some damage. So smash through into this chamber here. Uh, this large room here, it has three doors along the wall to your right. And behind you on the left, there's another door. Uh, so there's a total of four doors that exit out of this room here. And I'm going to put them on the map here. So the door back here seems to be a bronze banded door, rather sturdy looking while the three doors along this wall all seem to be more simple-looking doors made of wood. And then there's this little recess back here in the corner where there's a whole bunch of stuff. A lot. Let's see. This isn't exact, but I'm just going to throw in some benches to indicate that there's uh, yeah, some... Some tables and hey, things are, back are the doors the locked or are they unlocked? Can we just open them? Or we have to break through them again. Okay, well, when you entered into the room, uh, there's a door right here to your right. Uh, you look at this door and. Um, let me check my notes. Really. Wait, which one of the mirror images of the original model would be? <laughs> which one is the true one? I don't know. That's the reason it's called Mirror Image. Nobody's <laughs> supposed to figure it out. <laughs> the caster of Mirror Image has a midlife crisis. Which one is you or me? It doesn't look locked. You don't see oh. a lock on it. There is just uh. a simple handle to open the door. Open it. All right. You pop open the door. Booby trap. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, a bunch of steam bursts from the, the crack of the door as you begin to pull it open. Uh, the steam spreads like a mist quickly into the room. Roll a con save. Fuck. Wait a minute. Is this steam poisonous? Well, that's why there's a con save. <laughs> hey, I don't need to roll. You immune to I poison. I don't have any immunity. That's pretty handy. Yes. 
I am a UNT pureblood. Yeah, UNT pureblood doesn't care about no poison gas, but uh, soul the half elf does. So. <laughs> Constitution save. It's just a normal twenty. I wish you luck. Twenty. Because I did not think I have neutralized poison. I rolled an eighteen. Okay, so initially it bursts out and spreads like this. So a little bit puffs out through the door here. A bunch of it spreads out into the room. It doesn't even quite get to uh, Traxxas in, in, the, in, the, in the first little burst. It's slow moving. It shoots out of the door, but then it sort of just lazily puffs out and spreads. Uh, Deadly neurotoxin, your old friend. So you resist... Uh, whatever effect was on it. However, it tingles on your skin and doesn't feel pleasant. There's like ants crawling all over me. Yeah, it's definitely giving you uh, sort of like an allergic reaction. You feel like your skin's crawling with bugs. I feel like every door in here is booby trap now. <laughs> this whole dungeon is full of booby traps. The uh, The dwarves that were down in here were obsessed with surviving and uh, so they created a, a labyrinth of traps to ensure that anybody that came in here trying to exterminate them would meet an untimely end did it work uh well dwarves did survive the genocide so yes it did work huh wait but what's what's behind door number one <laughs> behind door number one and door number two was poison gas oh that was the <laughs> wow there's nothing in the room. It was just full of poison gas. There, there were uh, three doors. Two of them were the wrong choice. Oh, <laughs> huh. interesting. Why do the workbenches look like marbles? Oh, you don't have the object. It's not going to load. Uh, let me grab something else that I can throw in there. Um... Well, I guess that makes it easy to determine which door is a trap and which one is not. No, nah, that one looks yes. ugly. Just, just randomly opening it with absolutely no regards for safety. Have you not met Sia? That's all he did last campaign. I mean, he is a bard, so yeah. Last I campaign, know. he was like a vampire werewolf and had so many freaking immunities. Oh, uh, I was care. just a vampire werewolf. Oh, uh, whatever. He, he was a vampire one. That's right, Castor was the vampire werewolf. A vampire still gives you a lot of uh, nice little things. Uh, that reminds the, uh, me. Yeah, magic. Uh, that reminds me. Speaking of werewolves, Diamond, it was a different guy that I was thinking of by the name of Wowie that I used to play with. You have very, very similar voices. And so I was having a memory of the time that he had that werewolf character that sounded so cool. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate that you uh, say that my voice sounds pretty cool. Well, no, no. <laughs> I was saying you and him have the same sounding voice. Like, uh, like the werewolf was cool. The timbre of your voice is like identical to that other guy. Let's see here. Um... I use so many objects to choose from. Uh, it's gonna be. Can you see that? Yes. Uh, waiting for it. Okay. Yep. Can definitely see that. It's all done with this turn, though. Okay, so. I, I would assume so. He bit. had to dash. He had to dash to get into this room. Ooh, I wonder if that big old, if those ratchet things move that gear we found earlier all the way in the other part of the dungeon. Maybe, but I'm more interested in uh, what uh, Ninja said previous session, is that there's a mural in here, carved into the wall. Uh, it would be all about the history. Fancy dwarven art. Hey Ninja, did you end up giving the the ring away? 
The ring. I guess not. What ring? You know what up the ring? It was the ring that I got from that chest at the end of the fight. Yeah, I don't think so. Alright. Let's see, you were saying you'll distribute the money and gems that you found and you'll give the ring to the ranger once you've noticed the effects. What? Alright, so I guess he wanted to give you a ring. Yeah, it's what like kind a, of ring? Uh, a ring of jump. So I said when you put it on, it put a little spring in your step oh. that led you to believe it had some magical effect. So I guess uh, he's going to hand it off to to you, Sekafrog, to Varenza, and say, hey, oh. maybe you can make use of this. A ring of jumping and striding. Oh. However, it's unidentified, so you don't know exactly how it functions yet. Maybe some trial and error. All right. Is there an item card for that? So uh, could you could just look it up. Later. All right. It is a default uh, uh, magic item from the standard book, so you can just look it up on the web. It requires attunement, I assume. Uh, maybe. It's kind of a regular wondrous item. It says so ring striding. of jumping striding. Hang on, hang on. Are they different? Ring of jumping. I thought they had the same effect, but let me make sure it's not different from the boots. Uh... Yeah, it says it's just the jump spell. Mm -hmm. Okay, ring of jump. It's just jump ring of jumping. Okay. Uh, but it's pretty similar. It triples your jump distance. Okay, so it does require attunement, and I cat I can cast a jump spell at will. Ooh, at oh, will. Cast no. It's a bonus action. <laughs> it's an at will bonus action spell. Which triples your jump distance for a minute. So no. cast it on yourself? Can so he can, like yeah. he can go like ultra frog. instinct shaggy. Yeah, it's only yourself. The jump spell only works on yourself. Or the ring says it only works on yourself at least. Alright. Nice. Thank you, Thank you very much. You might need to attune to it though. I'm not sure. Yeah, the, I'll have to wait till we rest, but still. Okay, so you also will notice that it puts a little extra spring in your step. However, you don't exactly know how to activate it until you have it identified. Yeah. It's got like. So a... you can identify by just examining it during a short rest, correct? Um. With I... an attunable item. I usually require an identify of some sort, or at least an arcana okay. check. Okay. All right. Like if you role play it and say like I spend some time trying to figure it out, you make a you make an arcana yeah. check, then I'll usually allow it. All right, fair enough. But I was never but a right fan. Now, I was never a fan of the five e uh, hand wavy like oh you just go to sleep and then you identify one item per rest. Yeah. It whispers to you in this. That always sat wrong with yeah. me. I don't I don't like when things just happen just because they're lazy. <laughs> Okay, so, um, poison gas spreading. Uh, Morg, you see some poison gas coming out of that room over there. Do you want to stop digging and do something? Do you want to, does anybody else want to do something? I'm not actually in Why combat there... turns anymore, so you don't have to, like, plan it like a, like a combat, because the creature has technically retreated. Why's the fire dragon? Uh, there? Is the cloud just, like, lingering to... there, or is it just, like... Yeah, there's a cloud of poison coming out of that room. Wait, the fire drakeling is in combat? The drake is tamed by Traxxas. It's friendly-ish. I'm gonna wait till it's goes, like the cloud thins out a bit. Rensa goes to Grimorne. Hey, I bet you that poison is flammable. <laughs> We're not playing just any... Yeah. Hey, I know how to... I I know how to finesse our our local pyromaniac. How do we go across this? And I mean that with love. Like, look, there's three burning targets you can offer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll just shoot two of them are images, it. but uh. <laughs> are you just hesitant to run across the sand? 
I'm running across. The... You run across the sand. Oh, it's that door. So over here, there are, uh, well, there okay, there were it. two doors. Uh, the one has been broken and smashed apart, uh, and that hallway looks like there's a bunch of rubble in that hallway. I should probably put down some tokens to indicate that. Uh, uh, perception. This side here has a door. Oh, yeah. So you can go there's towards the door, or you can go towards the hallway with the rubble. I'll go to the door, I guess. Okay. There is a wooden door, similar to other wooden doors you've seen here in the dungeon. Mm, perception doesn't uh, indicate anything. Uh, it wouldn't help if you're looking for traps. You should do an investigate for that. Yeah, I'll do an investigate. You miss it. Not very good, so... 16. Hmm. 16. All right, so you look at the handle, and you can see that the handle actually has a little string attached to it that goes through a hole in the door. So if you turn the handle, it's going to pull that string along with it. I see. Is there a way to attach it without the, having the string being pulled? Or you could clip it. Yeah. I'll, uh, that's what I'll do. I'll, uh, move here on the side here. Okay. And then, with a blade, with a, I'll, uh, snip the one, the, the little cord. Okay. You cut the cord. Nothing happens. Okay, I open the door slowly. All right. You open the door. Um, you can see on the other side of the door there's, like, a, like a crossbow type device. And it's uh, aimed towards the, the opening, so like as the door would open, it would fire the shot. The string would pull and pull the trigger. Hmm. Is it, um, oh yeah. Is, uh, it's at the back of this? Uh, no, 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 it's just on the other side of the door here, so you'll have to move okay. it out of the way. So I remove the arrow and disarm it. Okay. Um, Does it look like a catapult or like a weapon? Or no, it's just like a like a crossbow, like a, but it's not yeah. designed to be wielded by a person. It's just a mechanism to fire the the shot. So it's just a trap. Is there anything else in the room? Yes, yes. So behind the trap, towards the back of the room, you're gonna see that there is a chest. Didn't investigate on the on the chest. Let's let some other people. Uh do some things when you're done with this. Mm -hmm. I'll just get a six. Okay. So you're checking the chest and uh, you mistakenly think that there's a trap and you spend a bunch of time trying to figure the trap out, but it's not real. It's a fake trap. It fakes you out. Oh. Meanwhile, Hi. Uh, who hasn't done anything in a while? Morg, you were digging. Dig, dig, yeah. dig. Do you continue digging? I'm going to move over here closer. I'm going to dig on this end. Okay. Maybe he's in this corner. Dig, dig, dig. The sand is quite loose. And uh, you dig down several feet without finding creature. Wait. Creature? As in from the Siltar. The book. He's digging for the Siltar. Oh, oh. He didn't find it falls in, the sand falls on top of him, suffocates to death. <laughs> that is a pretty dark thought. <laughs> Alright, so you guys can hear more digging over here in this corner. Uh, the poison gas eventually begins to recede, disperse down to the floor, dissipating. Once the gas is uh, is gone, you can see that there's some stuff in this room here.
Anything you want to do, Sia? Um, I'm waiting. Uh, can I check what it is? It's gas in the room. Well, what's going on? A gas can? Wait, there is gas in the room. What? Wah, wah. There's a gas can? It's a canister of something. <laughs> okay. When I said there's gas in the room, I didn't mean to say, say liver. <laughs> so, <laughs> these are the uh, the mechanisms that spew out the poison gas. And you, can, <laughs> you can see that they're uh, still emitting the poison gas into the room, but uh, the doors have to be closed for it to build up to a, the point that when you open a door, it all puffs out. So now it's just in the process of starting to refill. The gas is it, a, is it a light gas or a heavy gas? It's a heavy gas. It sinks to the floor after the initial uh, spread. So the room is empty besides these two gas canisters? Yeah. Do you guys think we have any use for these? Are they nailed to the ground? Nope. I can I can inhale a bunch and <laughs> hold it in for Texas, a Texas, why don't you go in there and like stuff some cotton into them or something like that? Plug up the hole. Since you're immune. Uh, don't have anything like cotton. We do have that beeswax, but that's not really going to help because the gas will just start building up once again and then just shoot out. It's been... Well, dry. you don't know it's under pressure. It's just leaking out. It's not like... I'm trying my hardest to find a use for this room, but it seems it was just to kill me. <laughs> it was under pressure, but now it's just sort of loosely pouring out. Is the gas flammable? Maybe. Only one way to find out. Are you sure you want to find out? <laughs> no, I'm not. That would 100% I mean, kill me. <laughs> you could just close the doors. It'll build up again. But if we don't want to go back in there, then what's the harm? Closes the doors with me inside. Lights a candle. Let's see. Traxxas would like to take a look at the stuff over here. No. See what's going on. So in the corner of the room, there's uh, the... Uh, the plaque at the back wall here, it's a big mural, and it depicts uh, dwarves, and they're toiling at their labor, and uh, it seems like they're cranking some sort of device, and uh, here in either corner here, there's some sort of device. It looks like, uh, like a dumbwaiter elevator system. Hmm. Traxxas will look over at Sol and say, help me out with this. What do you and mean? then uh, grab one of the ratchets, waiting for uh, Sol to grab I'll the other. I'll grab the other, but I also want to remember this is the war path, and I feel like we might just unleash a worse monstrosity. All right. Sol and the, the, the Naruto clones come over here and begin pulling at this lever. So you're each pulling Wait, how long at a does mirror image last? Are you each pulling at a different lever, or are you both going to work on the same one? We're, uh, we're pulling at different levers. Different levers. I think also, was... how long does mirror image uh, last? Like a minute. Oh, <laughs> is this this would be gone by now, correct? Well, uh, you probably started it less than a minute ago. Uh, so the clones are going to stick with me. All of this stuff happens pretty quickly after the little skirmish with the the silt horror. Okay. I assume you want us to make strength rolls. Well, hang on, hang on. So I was asking, are you both pulling on the one on the right, or are you each pulling on a separate one? We're each uh, we're pulling on a separate one. Pulling separately, yeah. Okay, okay. So each of you pulls on the thing. It doesn't require a strength check. These things are uh, mechanical... Uh, Dwarven creations, they're quite well engineered and well oiled, and they have a smooth action <laughs> as they rotate, and the elevator rises up, rises up, rises up. And see the dwarven tech. Okay. Wait, is Morge still digging, or is he down trying to find him? Still digging. <laughs> You're going to get yourself killed. If you do find it, what then? I eat it. <laughs> no, pretty sure it's going to eat you. I'm going to open the chest when I have a chest. We have the strongest jaw. We'll find out next season. 
All right. Hold on, Chris. So uh, the elevators come up to the top. Uh, the elevator on the right contains... Um, the well, trap. A barogue emerges from the elevator with a snarl. A what? Uh, yeah, but it's it's up because both of uh, both of us were doing two different elevators. So this bow rug is near the top, like you said. So the elevator on the right contains a barog. The elevator on the left contains the skeleton of a dwarf. What's a barog? A barog is a four armed giant. Is it friendly or? They are f very unfriendly. Think of, uh, think of the forearm thing from uh, Ben 10. Combat. Oh. Or that <laughs> ben 10. All right. So when the elevator comes up, initially it's uh, it's got this like weird effect on it. You can't quite tell what's going on there, but there's some sort of like some sort of like uh, crystalline structure, and then when it comes up to the top, it all sort of disintegrates and falls apart. And then the barogue was like in in the crystalline structure, but it becomes freed when the elevator comes up. It's like it was in suspended animation almost, like an experiment. But oh. when it's exposed I... to the air here, it all disintegrates and frees the creature. And in an enraged state, it steps out from the elevator and immediately will attack. So... Uh, can I can I drop it before it actually gets out of the elevator? Well, it's rather surprising when it comes out. So I just want to roll initiative to see who reacts first. All right. Fair enough. Oh, so fresh initiative rolls. All right. Yes. This is just my side dice coming up. Come on, dice gods. Oh, I'm back up to D8. Hooray! So the higher initiative will... Oh, 19. Did you beat the monster? Hopefully. I mean, this thing is pretty big. I don't expect it to be extremely dexterous. But it is four-armed, so I might be wrong on that endeavor. I'm not really? counter no more. I, I had the advantage, and I rolled a one and a two. <laughs> <laughs> what do you get, Sia? I initiated this plus three, so that would... I don't know what this last is there for. I think I put that on accident, but it's 12. Okay. Not bad. Not good. It's decent. Oh, right. I need to put my initiative in. For the first time in a long time, Daggermaw goes before Grenza. Oh, we're doing initiative now? And yep. everybody yeah. goes before you. Oh, God, probably. Not that Grenza can see wrap from where she's at between a hallway and two no, doors. You can and... probably hear it. Oh, yeah. I mean, I know something's up because I, I just heard screaming. All right. Everybody good? Mm -hmm. Yep, I got mine. All right. So, yes, Traxxas is quick to react. What do you do? I drop that brogue back down the mine shaft. Okay. So the uh, the mechanism is not gravity based. Uh, then if I you let go of to... it, it doesn't move. But if you roll it in the other direction, it will go down. I am yeah. I'm I'm going to would making a strength check. No, maybe that's a bad idea. Technically, the barogi is still kind of scrunched down into the container. Well, I I want to get this thing down as fast as possible because it's just like nope, not dealing with that. Okay. So you begin to roll it down. Uh, does anybody say anything? Like the brogue, of course, is going to let out a bit of a roar. Just scream, holy shit! Out of surprise. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, so Morg over in the other room, you were digging when you hear a roar and Soul says, holy shit. Mm. I'm gonna stop digging and I'll quickly run over the sand. Wait, is the sand roughing? No. And you see, you, you see Traxxas frantically spinning the wheel in the other direction to send the elevator back down? Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, I don't think I can do anything while I'm in here. Alright. Uh, I'll just... Actually, I'll back up to about here and, and I'll just ready an attack action. If it comes over. Okay. The... Yeah, yeah. The Barogue is going to try to use its, like, arms. It's going to stick its upper body out of the, uh, the elevator container. It's going to make an athletics check. It's going to push with all its might. I uh, suppose I have to make an opposed. Yeah. This is going to be... the Seltor attack, by the way? DC 14 for you. Uh, it hasn't attacked yet, no. That's totally doable, Traxxas. Come on. Lord. <laughs> You might not be the strongest, but 14 is doable. Oh. Nope. Okay, so, so the Barogue is mighty, and with its forearms, it's going to press up with its mighty strength until it creates enough of a gap that it can squeeze out. So Good it squeezes out it had to waste here. its turn doing that. Because we have a we have a morgue now. <laughs> I'm feeling a little bit better about our chances. Uh, while the brogue is like lifting up the elevator thing, can we like attack his like hands or legs and like stop him from like lifting up the shaft back open? Hmm. Uh, he was too quick. If you were able to attack him before he did that, I would say yes. But because he's now done it and gotten out, it's too late. Stop but kicking like down the spine shaft. But like I said, he wasted his turn just doing that maneuver. Yeah. The Barogue is powerful. It is a giant. He is sized large and heavily muscled and quite enraged with confusion. Rage weapon. He suddenly wakes up. Hundreds of years after the fact, science is trying to make going wrong. I'm just trying to imagine what that emotion feels like. <laughs> feels like the Doom guy waking up in a, a room full of zombies. <laughs> you mean possessed? Possessed, yes. Uh, all right, so uh, Dagger Maw. Uh, Dagger Maw is going to look at Brinsa and I'll say. That doesn't look good. Go, help out. Okay. Let's see, so she's got dash. We can go 60. Um, that seems like way too many squares for 60. Am I doing this wrong? Hold on. Yeah, I'll be back. Uh, Let's see. So One, remember, the, uh, the five three, foot squares are subdivided. Four, so. five, six. You're looking at the bigger squares, not the smaller ones. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It just makes it. Just please don't roll a 100 on that percentile. So, like, that's a 5 foot square right there. No, no, I know. I was using the little counter that was right here. The thing like, is, that it shows doesn't up. really count diagonals and stuff. Very yeah. Well. All right. Yeah. So. Anyways, uh, so yeah, so she ends up there. Dash is in. Gotcha. All right, Sia, the Barogue stands before you, a powerfully muscled hulking beast. Okay. You're I'm standing here. Can... You have your mirror image still active. I'm guessing. I'm guessing it's not resistant to psychic damage, so I want to try to cast Dissonant Whispers on him. All right. Three D six psychic damage. Roll a one. They rolled a what? I rolled a one on that save. 
Oh, that's God, probably God. a fail. Nine damage. All right. You add to its rage and confusion. Isn't he a third right now, too? Isn't Yeah, there's no whisper, so it'd make them afraid. Hold up, and whisper to him in the future. There's no getting on to ring pain. The target must make a whisper saving throw on a fail save. Reduce reflective damage. It must immediately use its reaction, if available, to move as far away as speed allows from him. Yeah, he's stuck where he's at. He can't go anywhere. Sure he can. He can jump down the mine shaft. Oh, yeah, there's nowhere to go. <laughs> I guess he could five foot step. I wonder. I wonder how much I can traumatize it before we kill it if I repeatedly cast this in the whispers. Hopefully. How many not. spell slots do you have? <laughs> <laughs> um, I could cast first level spell. I already cast um mirror image once, so I have one second level spell slot left, and I could cast this in the whispers three more times. All right. So you're blasting it with uh, dissonant whispers, and then. Um, can I cast Bardic Inspiration on someone as a bonus action? Of course. Yes, and this time I, I again want to give it to Morg. Please use it this time. Okay. Vrenza. Yes. Yeah, Vrenza will follow suit, and I already measured out where Dagmar is, so I'm just going to go one square next to her. Get some movement. And I get eaten. <laughs> you run across the sand and nothing happens. Oh, thank God. Yeah, like I was saying, please don't roll 100 on those percentiles. They're right. I'm rolling uh, a d20, yeah. but I rolled a 4 on that one, so it stayed away. Can I, can, can I just ask, what do you need to roll for it to wake up? So it had a, it had a morale... So I'm I've Issue. got a I've got a morale DC. Um, if if I roll like if I roll really high, then it's beaten the uh, the fear that it had, and it will try to attack again. Good times. But I keep rolling low. Right. And once that initial morale breaks, it's a pretty high DC in order for it to actually like get get brave again. <laughs> It would rather. I mean, that makes uh, sense. It would rather hunt easier prey most of the time. Yeah, so I think it's up down there. Anywhere from half to a third of its damage of its hit points, it's it's not happy. No. And in the wild, predators are actually pretty cowardly. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, Creus. My turn. So you're in front of this treasure chest. Do you want to open it up? Now, you checked it, and you were pretty sure there was a trap on it. What do you want to do about that? I open it. <laughs> you open it anyway. <laughs> yes, the soul way. <laughs> Fuck caution. Oh. <laughs> the ceiling you don't, don't get a 50, 50 chance of you dying. Why not take the game? <laughs> I hope a fireball comes out of it. <laughs> you would. You'd like eat it for the glory of your god. Yep. One moment. So when you open up the chest, inside the chest there's uh, only one object in there. Uh, it is a recurve bow. It looks to be of high quality, and it's uh, swaddled in silk and felt sort of decorative you don't know what's going on psycho so <laughs> you don't know that he's found a bow get this set up here I'll put it on a note card Oh, it's lagging. Hold on. And then... I 
I'm just standing in the box like that. Haha, -ha, you fool. It was a mimic all along. <laughs> it eats your hand. Alright, so it's an intimidating oak recurve shortbow of masterwork quality. Cool. Intimidating. So, the masterwork effect, it's got plus one to hit, and it's got advantage on intimidation checks. Also, it has two bonuses. It's got two things going on. Nice. Oh, yeah, mine does two. It's, oh, it's a light and has an extra mm -hmm. and 20 feet of range. Yep. It's a recurve, so it can be made out of lighter materials, yet still pack the same punch over a long, longer distance. Is it plus one, or is it just an item plus one? Uh, no, you can't tell. It's unidentified. Oh, okay. But if you fire it, it does seem to be... Uh, Pretty precise. Very precise, yes. It's a short bow. Weapons. So that makes it a martial weapon. Although Soul could use it since he's an elf. Don't elves automatically get like proficiency with bows? Yes. Including half elves? Oh, half elves no. Elves get proficiency with bows and long swords, I believe, on top of whatever else they want to have. It depends on your class too. Oh, I thought that was a racial effect. Yeah, it's an elf race. Swords okay. and bows. Wait, elves just get immediately proficient. Oh. It's because they live a really it's long time. It's supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. And that's what I was going to say. It's a longevity thing. I pick it up real quick. And then I'll start moving towards. Uh... Wait a second. You have to count squares and not use the little meter. You'll have to stay there because you can't exactly pick it up after opening a chest. That's an action in and of its own. Mm -hmm. I still have a movement, though. Yes, you just can't move with the bow. Oh, well, I can. Sure, you can. He can use his bonus action as to grab the item. Well, hang on, hang on. So, to open a chest and take an item out of it is a use an item action. And then he still has a movement and possibly a bonus action. Okay, okay. I was a bit confused. My bad. Can I, uh, so I can't sprint, huh? No. Alright, so I'll move to here. Okay, so you run up to Varenza. You've got a cool looking bow in your hand. It's very intimidating looking recurve bow. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how a bow could be intimidating looking. <laughs> it's a bow straight from a toe of the hun. Unless it's like that giant bow from... Uh, from uh... The Scorpion King? No, I'm thinking like Dark Souls. Oh. Like, look at what I found over there. Dark Souls, there's like a... In Dark Souls 3, there's a giant with a giant bow. <laughs> Shoots you while you're running through a graveyard with these giant arrows. It's a pain in the ass. All right, so back to the top. You can see the initiative on the right side there. Uh, there's nobody on pink, so Diamond, what do you do? Well, I'm going to blast this thing with as much power as I can All using right. a level three guiding bolt. Free, actually, since that's part of my uh, circle of stars. All right. Wait, can it be level three for free as well? It doesn't say anything about level requirement. Uh, for guiding bolt, let me just go back here. Oh, you guys found the magical jerry cans. I mean, upcasting it would seem <laughs> to be a little broken. Uh, you have the guiding bolt spell prepared. It counts as a druid spell for you, and it doesn't count against the number of spells you can have prepared. You can cast guiding bolt without expending a spell slot. You can do so a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, only two. Uh, and you regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest doesn't say anything about uh, level switching. But to, to level switch it, you actually have to expand a spell slot. That's how level switching works. If it had an effect where it said it did more at certain levels, yes. But if it has that, no. 
Huh? I was sure. Hold on. Any bolts at higher levels when you cast a spell using a spell slot of second level or higher, the damage increases by one d six for each spell slot level above first. Right. So you actually have to expend the spell slot to upcast it. So like the free but... one would be at its base level. Fine. I'll use it. I'll use up one of my spell slots at third level, but I'm blasting this thing with as much energy as I can. So that's, that's fair. 66 radiant damage. Heavy duty. Can you hit it though? Oh. The Barogue sees your spell casting and will try to dodge. Yep. Okay. Uh, let's see. I believe. Hold on. Was my spell casting modifier? Plus five. Okay. Twenty-one. That's a hit. Roll some damage. Nine. Sorry, guys. I'm back. My mom called me. Okay. Did I miss anything? Hi, mom. <laughs> Did I miss anything? Oh, that's nice. Nineteen damage. Bam. All right. That's sexy diamond. Your guiding bolt hits the barogue in the chest, scorching it right down to the bones of its rib cage. It lets out a bloody cough and stumbles back momentarily. Um, do you want to move or do anything else? Uh, yes, I will move back so that Morg can uh, can get through and. Uh basically uh, attack this thing's throat and maybe possibly send it over the edge down the mine, down the elevator shaft. Um, Ninja, did I miss my turn to initiate? Your turn's coming up pretty soon. It's long as turn. Yeah. Then the creature, and then Dagger Maw, then you. So what does Morg do? You're muted. Well. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I said, what did you cast, Diamond? Guiding Bolt at yeah, third okay. level. Big damage. Um, Can I even move in there or Soul's in the way? Mm, he's standing in that space in between there. You can stand on the spaces that have the, the gear mechanism, but they're rough terrain. So you can get in there, but you'd have to squeeze. Okay. You'd be basically like standing on the mechanism. Or is this is this space open here in front? Yes. Okay. I'll squeeze into that space and attack him. While raging, right? I know you're uh, still in your giant hyena form, but while raging. No, not while raging, because that dumb thing went into the ground and ran away so and his rage ran out. out yeah oh you don't have any more rages for the day no we did not rest <laughs> back to well, back giant friend. monsters no rest for the wicked uh let's see is it okay it is a plus five plus five to hit kill it the spider web, uh, or is it just the does 12 hit? You have advantage, getting bolt. Oh, I do? Okay, cool. Yes. Roll it again. Oh, wait, and I could use, like, uh, reckless attack, but I don't need to. I actually it. forgot about that effect. Yeah, stuff like reckless attack, attack, try to call that before you make the roll. Yeah. All right. Well, I didn't, but I did have guiding bolt, so 21 to hit. Mm -hmm. That hits, right? It's even exceptional. Right. Ooh. Oh, wait, so 12 would have hit. I mean, yeah, 12 would have hit that. It would have, yeah. Just mm, barely, but yeah. enough. Damage. Damage is. Uh, wait. Are you Two. using your spear? I'm not raging. No, I'm a hyena. I don't use a spear. What am I, hyena? <laughs> I don't have any hands. You can, you, you can carry it in your mouth. You can become, you can become the next Sith. 
I think this group is more animal than... <laughs> Sometimes it seems that way. <laughs> Not raging, so it's only 2, 6, plus 3. And I can use my focus dice. Oh, and I also reroll one of the uh, things with advantage as well. So let's see. Uh, okay, that didn't do anything. The focus die just re uh, switches one of the damage dice, right? Yeah. Okay, uh, so let's see. That's 11 plus 3, 14 points of piercing damage. Your side, your, your side dice is for strength? Yes, it is. Nice. All right, a solid hit. The Barogue recoils in pain. All right, he's going to not take that lightly as he lashes out at you with his multi-arm attack. Nice. Good job hitting him. Well, I mean, good luck hitting him. Wait, how large is this thing? He's not that high. <laughs> you know ninja's rolls are terrible. Is this a medium or a large creature? Don't say that. Uh, it is, it is a large, large creature. Oh, okay. yeah, the Shield of Faith tokens where Mord's at, just since his actual icon doesn't fit there. Okay, so his first fist comes flying in. That's a 23 to hit. 23 hits. All right. It's not exceptional, though. He punches you for nine damage. He's so strong. Roar. His second punch comes in as like a hook to the body. Or cut me. It's lagging. What is this giant circle you keep carrying everywhere with you on a pole? That's a twenty-four to hit. Technically, that's supposed to be got, uh, gone right now. Um, the hook to the body. Flame twenty. Also uh, does nine damage. Nine more damage. All right. And then, uh, and then that he... is ten above my AC, so that is exceptional. And then he takes his remaining two arms and he, like, clenches his fists together. And then he raises his arms way up above his head and he does, like, a big heavy power attack with both hands. Um, Ooh, double hammer fist. Yeah, double hammer fist. So, uh, let's see. This one's only going to have three extra to hit. He's doing minus five to hit. 21 hits. <laughs> uh, power attack, what does that add? Plus 5 to damage? Is that uh, like the Great Weapon Mastery? Or the Sniper Shot? Uh, it's similar to it, but it doesn't do plus 10 damage. It does, I think, yeah, plus 5 damage instead. I'll take so, a look. It's like minus 5 to hit, plus 5 to damage. Alright. Uh, 14 attack damage. 14. I think... That's a great and glory thing, right? Uh, sort of, sort of. Uh, okay. it exists as like a as a feat. You can get it from uh, what is it like? Polar when Master, wielding, great weapon fighter has it. Yeah, when wielding any non-light melee weapon, you can choose to suffer a minus five penalty to attack for plus ten to damage. So it's like no. the sniper shot. Two gain plus ten points. But then Grit and Glory also added yeah. it as like a Grit and Glory thing anyone can do. I'll be right back. I just gotta take a shit. Yeah. Right. Okay. So it's <laughs> so it's five less, yeah. Nature calls. Okay. Alright, so he made his multiple attacks. It was nine damage, nine damage, and then fourteen damage. Bam, bam, yeah. bam. That's multiple great. heavy hits. Was that 32 but damage? He still lives. I'm still in my wild shape form. <laughs> oh, yeah. That too. So you've only got a few hit points left in that wild shape form. All right. Do you have any wild shapes left, or is that the last one? Too? Yeah, that's my last one, too. Because we oh, fought something we're gonna else. Because we, were, because we were fighting the uh, Lava Drake before, and I used it. Yeah. Oh. Dagger Maw. Uh, let's see. Are there any open melee combat spots? So, I was saying that anybody could stand on the gears, so you could get into this space here. It's rough uh, terrain, so it'll cost a little extra movement to get in there. One, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, eleven. She can't even make it. She can make it onto the gear over here. And she, let's see. Man, yeah, long as in that one, space two, three. <laughs> no, long is right here. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Since long normally fills four squares and is currently squeezing into half that much space, I'm imagining that it's like these three squares I, here. I can't move dagger ball. I'm locked out again. And yeah, it's doing that. Over. It's doing that lag thing. Just give it a moment. So, if you can move her, move her wherever she can move. I, I've tried four times to move her, and I just cannot move her 12 squares. Alright. Where are you going to end up? Right here? Every, I, I have no idea. Every time I try to count squares, it lags out, and I have to start over again. I've tried four times. Alright, where'd you start? I started just north, of, or just next, uh, above Ransom. At least from my angle. Yeah. yeah you can go, I you can go they, can, they can reach there. So, okay. let's see, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. I, I just don't have it in me to try it this time to move this. 45. So, 50, model. what do you have, 50 if you dash? 60 if I dash. Yeah, I think you can make it That's onto good. this, but not further. All right. Dagger Maw begins oh. climbing up onto the mechanism. All right. All right. Uh, see ya. Are you back? Yeah, I'll get back to you then if you're not here. Rinsa. Rinsa is going to move into the room. One, three. So Dagger Maw is in reach of the frog, right? She's on the mechanism. There's a five foot gap in between. Oh, well, that sucks. All right. Anyways, uh, she's going to, because the poison tipped arrows only last so long, so she's going to grab one of her poison tipped arrows and aim it at the rogue. Aim or fire? Well, fire. I can't use aim because I move. But that is the so, thing people say, is I aim at it, but mechanically, uh, I'm not using the aim feature. Yes. Exactly. Colloquial aim, not, uh, let's see, and I have, uh, plus nine. And no advantage this time. I like this Baroque. Uh, so, four, so 27. 27 will definitely hit. It's exceptional. All right. So, a couple things are going to happen. So, first of all, let me roll my damage. Wait a minute. I had a 21 on my hit, too, and you didn't tell me it was an exceptional. No, armor class 11. 21s would be exceptional. I get to re-roll a, a d6, then. Do you remember what your lowest roll was? It was a 1. Oh, and it would matter, then. Wait, what? D8. D8 plus 4. He's a... still a 1. <laughs> no changes. Uh, gotcha. Um, so, uh, so it's a D8 with advantage, I guess. And then I get plus 4 damage. It's not an aberration or a humanoid, right? It's a giant class. Giant. So D8 with advantage... So it does seven damage. However, it now needs to make a con save or really bad things are about to happen to it. It has to make a DC 15 con save. 19. He easily ah. resists the poison. I figured that uh, was going to happen. Yeah, when you got there. 20 con, it's going to be pretty hard to make poison work on him. Yeah. That's why I didn't even chance using my free poison spray. Oh, wait. He's even proficient on con saves. He had two more beyond that. That was like a 21 roll. <laughs> Damn. Uh, you know, things are going to occasionally resist my poison, but the, the, the application only lasts a minute. 
I was thinking this thing might wake up, and it did. So if I don't use my poison arrows, they're wasted. So weak against mind influencing effects and psychic damage, but strong against poison and strength based effects. Yeah. It happens. Um, bonus action. Uh, I probably should have done this earlier. Never mind. No bonus action. Okay. Chris. I should have put Hunter's Mark on it. I Move inside and shoot a firebolt to. All right, you run into the room. You see the giant engaged yep. in battle. You launch your attack, casting your magic. 26 to hit. That's exceptional. Uh, 12 damage. Max damage, no need to reroll. No, that was not max damage. You rolled a 2 rolled and a 10. Two. So re roll one of those d10s to see if you do better. I re rolled a 2, I guess. Oh, yeah, I see that. 2 and 10. It's I rolled it. It's still two. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't matter. <laughs> it's twelve damage. It's All the right. same. Well, the Brogue's got quite a bit of damage on him now as that firebolt hits him in the face, burns off a lot of his facial hair. Uh do you, you want to see these bloody? Uh maybe. He's getting there. Yeah, yeah, I'd say. He's obviously wounded at this point. Why don't we just have Soul cast his cantrip so he's like not losing his turn? See ya. See ya. See ya, kill it. We got uh, two chances here to kill it. Well, which is worse, dissonant whispers or vicious mockery? Vicious mockery is a cantrip, at least. It doesn't use up a spell slot in case he wants to use those for something else later. Hasn't he cast that a bunch of times? I wonder how many slots what, he has. What, Vicious Mockery? That. Vicious Mockery is a cantrip. He can use that however much he wants. No, the other one, the one he, he just cast a minute ago, he's cast uh, at least once before in this dungeon. Yes. Yeah. He's Sorry. spent two or three spell slots. Already. Hey, you're back. What's happened? It's we, your turn. It, what do you do? Yo. So, where, where's the... Oh, it's just... The stream has it on operating with the monsters. All right. Uh... So, it's right in your face. There's, I mean, Distant Whisper is just a nice damaging move, but there's nowhere for it to retreat, so... Can it go down the elevator shaft? Nah. Oh, okay. Um, Ninja, blue-balling us again. <laughs> then I will just cast... Is it low enough for sleep, you guys think? No. Maybe. It it's is wounded. It is bloodied, which means you can tell that it's badly wounded. Uh, I'm going to cast sleep at a second level spell slot. Mm. How many second level spell slots do you still have? Is this your last one? Last one. All right. Roll so down. sleep. Uh, how much does an extra spell slot add in terms of sleep? Another D8 or? Uh, I'll have to look it up. I I got it. I have my spell guide in front of me. Does it add two D8? Uh, two D8. Yeah. So he's gonna roll a total of blah, 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 seven D8. Nice. I think you're gonna get it. You need to roll. Come on. Well, no whammy, no whammy, no whammy. 40. Not a 40. Does it have 101 or less HP? Actually, if he rolls 40. Oh, yeah. I thought it said 81 for a second. 8, 7, 7, 7. That's a big roll. The burrow goes down in a heap and begins snoring loudly. <laughs> Let's go! Shh, bunch of the cobwebs go down its throat. Shh, bunch of spiders More crawl into its mouth throat. while it's sleeping. You know the old story. At least, at least seven spiders crawl yeah. into your throat while you're sleeping every night. Just kill it now, all right? Wait, wait. You could tie it and then throw it over the pit of sand and wait for the worm to come and eat it. <laughs> 
<laughs> or it wakes up when we're trying to do that and starts to fight all over again. That's it's just idea. asleep. It's not paralyzed. If we kill it, we can take it to the fire drake to feed it. True. That's another no, idea too. You want to do with it, That's actually a pretty smart First, idea from uh, from Krius there. Feed the beast so it doesn't want to eat you anymore. True. Are we feeding it alive? It no, no, no. If we kill it and put it in the middle of the sand, like Kriya suggested, then if we're walking over the sand and it activates, it's got a nice meal to eat instead mm -hmm. of trying to eat us. It's like a giant creature too, so it's gonna. It's gonna. Is feeding the fire drink accomplish it. anything? Yeah. It Not is. as much as feeding a snow horror. <laughs> Y'all are just we'll too catch scared. them on fire. <laughs> It's... You all have no balls. <laughs> no balls. Brenta, Brenta will agree with that. She has no ball. <laughs> no testicular no fortitude. Ball. Testicular fortitude. Okay. And I found I found this bow by the way. So anyways, somebody needs to coup de gras. Who wants to try it? Morg? Or melee? I have a dagger. Can I coup de gras? Sure. You just have your action. I don't know. Why not? We're out of combat. Anybody can do it. Yeah, I want to do it. You just have to roll above a 10. All right, so just roll an attack with a dagger. Or, well, yeah, you have to roll an 11 plus. Well, Otherwise, you right, just do so a print on it and you wake it up. B20 plus 5. Wait, can I only reckless attack while I'm... No, you can raging? reckless attack when you're not raging. 22 to hit. Hit. It's dead. All right, you finish it off. Slitting its throat or something like that. If you think about it, sleep on a on a low level enemy is just forty damage. <laughs> on a low health enemy, sleep is just straight forty. Like a high. Oh, I like sleep. <laughs> this is a Whoa. CR three monster. As long as you target it when it's low on health, oh. it just works. CR three, we can stomp waffle that thing all day. Although it did a pretty good imitation of stomp waffling more. These things hit real hard, and they have four arms, which means they hit multiple times. I only attacked yes. three times because he did that power attack in there, but they can make four attacks. Oi. And I, I take out the bow, and I show it to the group, and say, anybody might be interested in this. Want to have the tech magic? I haven't used it. Uh... Well, can anybody else use bows? I guess the question is, it's very nice. other than Brenta. I, I use that, so I could think, use it. I think druids can use bows. It's made of wood. As long as it's not metal, druids don't mind. I guess, well, no, but are they proficient, I guess, is what it is. Mm, probably not. I don't think it's a simple weapon, because it's a compound I'm a, bow. It's martial. I'm a dex fighter. <laughs> Just because you're a dex doesn't mean your proficiency. It's a short bow. I'm also a fighter. Fighters. I have proficiency in every weapon. There you go. Looks a bit special. We forget about that all the oh, time, yeah. but yeah, he can use it. Oh, you're a fighter? Yeah. I'd yep. say, yeah, then I'd say give it to uh, the soul, because he, you're probably not going to be engaging in melee all that often, are you? Uh, although I'm a fighter, if I get close, I won't do as much damage if I'm far away. Cast sleep, there's no whispers, and a bow. Also, it's yeah. an intimidation bow, and intimidation is based on charisma. Mm. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> nice. Yeah, nice. druids can't use bows regard well they're not proficient with bows so that would go to yeah soul. yeah give it to soul princess, yeah. princess I have a lot of things to just make her. people run away from me but nothing to bring them closer forever alone <laughs> you can take it so uh, but nobody has identified <laughs> so where are you does anybody have detect magic as a ritual i would love to see sia hold up that bow ready to fire at like a guard as they're like trying to sneak by and be like you cannot see me then rolls a like, nat 20 on their intimidate so you don't have a, a corner huh? do you? right sorry Chris, you're a bit quiet let me turn you up you ever see do you, have a, do you have a corner on the table a corner um i don't have i'm not i don't have tabletop simulator i'm watching it through the screen oh so uh, he, he actually does have a spot though if you look at the purple section over here i sort of have this set up for him this one here yeah yeah his his uh <laughs> initiative counter is right there so anything like if i put his figurine off the table i move it over into here so anything for him on a note card or whatever just put it right here all right so yeah. make sure you take that's why it intimidates on that, that, on that weapon 
for your uh, sheep. Great. Um, can you send it in Discord so I can put it on my character sheet? Done and done. Great. Make a note, though, unidentified. Just why does that look like it's from RuneScape? The image. Isn't that uh, Skyrim? Is it, that, don't, that doesn't look like a worthless bow, is it? I thought that was from the Reach in Skyrim. I just looked up for intimidating bow, and that is what came up. <laughs> intimidating bow. I inspect this uh, door. Are we in the middle one? No. I mean, if you threaten somebody with that right in their face, I, I would take a step back. It's worth quite a lot, too. 16. It does a D6, right? Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, As you good. approach the door with your careful investigation, you realize that in front of the door is a pressure plate that you probably should not Ooh. step on. Hmm. I, uh, I take a look closer and see if I can disarm it. Okay. Well, typical pressure plate disarm is to wedge something in there. Do you have a piton, a dagger, something small that you can fit in there? Mm -hmm. I believe so. Can I use the tip of a spear? Sure. I'll do that. Shove it under there. All right. You stab a spear down into the gap, wedging it so that the uh, pressure plate cannot be depressed. Then I try to open the door. All right. So the door is unlocked, and it opens, revealing a hallway. I let the group know, and then I just take a step in about the pressure plate. But I'll let them, um, I'll let them deal with this, uh, this enemy that we just killed. Okay. Wait, where's their pressure plate? Um, Ninja, I have a question. In front of the metal door over here. Right here. For, um, for, oh. the, for the character sheet you made, there's like four weapons I can put in like these slots, but how do I add another slot? Mm, you can't. You'd probably have to just put like a weapon you're not planning to use in your backpack and then use that slot for a weapon that's more likely to be used. And you're going to need some arrows too. Remove this flail I have. <laughs> Wait, no, but two flails are actually a D8. Just don't care. I'll remove the needle's poison. I'll just keep it as a backup. It does one damage. It shouldn't be that hard to remember how much it does. Hey, see ya. So, Brent is going to go and hand you 10 homemade bone arrows. Thank you. Fancy. So, uh, I can make you more later. See ya. Um, um, question, though, whose bone are these made out of? See ya. Uh, go, go to the character sheet, go to the top right, click on share, and then change, change that to, with the link can edit. You got it? Want me to send it to you? Uh, I still have it. I'm just going to reload it. All right, so... Hmm. I don't know if I can add another weapon without fucking up the... Oh, you know what I could do? I could add it at the bottom. Hold on, hold on. Let me... Let me do this thing. So I'm going to add a bunch of rows, and then I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to paste it here. Mm, that almost works. <laughs> oh. Huh. Almost. One second. Let me just change this code. And this code. And this code. Ah, 
All right. Do you see those extra uh, weapon things at the bottom now? I see extras, but I see the ones that were already, like, just down near the... I put them at the bottom. They're from, like, 98 to 118 on the stats tab. I put a, a, a whole extra copy of the weapons thing way down at the bottom there. Oh, okay, yeah, I see it. All right, so you can use those now. All right, thank you. Sure. Yeah, if you're going to have levels in Fighter, you can have a lot of weapons. <laughs> Very bone. You need that extra space for all those extra weapons. So, uh, Grimorn steps into a narrow passageway. It's not even quite five feet across, maybe four. So, like, your shoulders are rubbing on the sides of the walls here. Narrow dwarven passage. Even the That's ceilings are low. Does my perception allow me to observe some? Passive perception, you don't see anything in the hall. Okay. What an 18. You doing an active perception with an 18? That's my passive. And your passive is 18. Uh, though that is really good, you don't see anything. Investigate in front of me, like especially like the floor, see if there's more like tiles and things that could be pressure. Mm -hmm. 12 12 yeah, you don't see any traps there and what are the other what are the other people doing when I take a look like Vrens is making Vrens sure that's disarmed yeah so I'm going to try to do that right now uh, can I get a guidance Yeah, I could cast uh, guidance on you. I, I think everybody can cast guidance. I'm <laughs> just asking if somebody will please cast guidance. I will assist you. I cannot you. cast guidance as I'm a giant hyena. <laughs> it requires verbal and somatic components. Mm -hmm. It's a little hard when all you can do is make hyena laughing noises. Well, you try he can wag his tail. He can do both things. He can verbalize and do wag his tail. Will you feed the Anyways. monster to the to the to the to the worm? Yeah, is, are you strong enough as a hyena to like drag that thing over to the uh, sand pit? Probably. Darn, we're not feeding the Drake. Maybe Maybe later. Neil. Kind of a lot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so it. sixteen is that enough to jam the pressure plate? Yeah. I didn't roll great. So, you it's disarm the pressure plate. Alright, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna I'm gonna start dragging the bro out here. <laughs> the bro. The bro. I like the that. bro. Come here, bro. Hey, bro. Uh, the GH is silent. I'm gonna start thrashing it around over the sand pit. <laughs> All right, you throw the corpse down on the sand pit, and you make a bunch of thrashing motions to attract the beast. You really have a death wish, don't you? <laughs> Let's kill it. No, we're trying to feed it so it like goes dormant. But it's do you really back? think this one body is enough to satiate it? It's a giant. It's still a large creature. That thing's got to weigh five, six hundred pounds. And that worm took a lot of damage, huh? It, is it thir the, thir 13 or 17? Horror? I only rolled an 11, so it does not actually emerge right away. Oh. Are we trying to kill it when it emerges? I want to kill it. <laughs> uh, I'd really rather avoid it. Oh, the monster's back. Hmm. That your mom nearly died. Yeah, well, so, so something you may not know is since she's my animal companion she's actually sort of used to my soul in a certain sense so if she dies i can like resummon her but thematically the rp of it is that you just have a litter of puppies in the background that you're raising so that when this one dies you just pull out the next one multiple dagger moss he keeps in his bag it's like a pocket bed mention all right now's your turn 
No, I like the idea of like reconstructing Daggerball from like the base elements of nature. Baby moss. That's yeah, a little weird and magical for a ranger build. I don't know. I guess so. I mean, it's your call. It's you, you do it's, you. It's rules as written. It's rules as written. Yeah. You are a sick, sadistic bastard. Who me? Yes. Not saying he wants Frankenstein to die. Frankenstein's <laughs> puppy rebuild it after. No, it no, no, I don't. I, I definitely do not want her to die. I'm just saying, if she does, you know, there's, it's, it's. Brenza is not going to be torn about it because she can bring her friend back. Yes, well. but you, but there, therein lies the thing. You don't want her to die, so you wouldn't willingly put Daggerma in danger, such as what Morg is doing right now. Well, I I put Daggerma in danger every time I send her up to the tank for me. So we kill it. And it's not. It's not a. It's not a. Uh, it's not a cheap affair either. It costs fifty uh, ceramic pieces just to get the components in order to rebuild her, like resummon her. So, so it's, it's not something that Brenta wants to do, but it's something that Brenta knows she can do. All right, it's your choice, and just making a. Can you come? Oh, no. Could you come in this passage and see if it's safe? Yeah, there you go, Mr. Phil. Send it to our our no. Daggerball's got plus two to investigate. I think she has the highest investigate modifier in the group with plus two. Yeah, we're, we we don't have much intelligence. We we that. no, we are not the smartest bunch of dudes. <laughs> Well, that's the thing. Like all the classes that have high intelligence are arcane classes, and it's like it really sucks to play an arcane class in this world. I'm gonna drop out of uh, Drake form. Okay. We're Jim, taming baby Drake. Can play uh, uh, trap no. so cool. Silt R. You said level so, uh, thirteen um, or seventeen. So let's see. So. In the investigate check for the next four squares is only an 11. All right. So we're going to go. That takes us to the end of the hallway, and then we're going to turn. So once again, so nobody maybe we, nobody spots any traps. The hallway seems safe. So, and then we'll do it again. All right. You travel to the north ways, and then there's a bit of a zigzag in the passage. Check it carefully really again for traps. You're once again fairly certain there's nothing to worry about in this hall. Hey, did you guys remember there was a skeleton in this other elevator? Nope. Okay. Anyone looted? Thought I should mention I that. I did. Mm -hmm. so, so, are we going to ride the elevator down? Well, Grimorne asked for Renza's help, and I wasn't quite sure what everybody else was doing, but it looks like everybody's following, and we're ignoring the potential looting opportunities. Okay. We didn't even look at the Brogue's body. No, there's an entire big room that we have an open over here too. Like, oh, yeah. we just threw it in the sand. I thing. wanted to see like what was this tunnel. The Brogue then... was a prisoner. He didn't have anything. That's why he was fighting with his fists instead of a weapon. So why don't you check out the skeleton? Uh, yeah, sure. All right. What's the skeleton? So. Uh, you go over to the elevator, and inside this elevator is the body of a dwarf. Um, it's the skeletal remains of the dwarf. Uh, he's got dwarven clothing, and it's quite musty and old, quite ancient. Must. Uh, he doesn't seem to have anything of value. His clothing is quite decayed. Uh, but around his neck, there's a, a cord... And dangling from the cord is a key, a metal key. Uh, we need that. We need three keys to open that that locked door all the way back here. So that's uh, one of the three keys we need. Cool. I'm gonna take the key and pocket it for later. All right, you have one of the three keys. There was a clue about the three keys, but nobody could read Dwarven, so nobody knows what the hell those clues are. Um, what about, you know, what about the giant mon? Oh, it's eating the. Okay. All right, uh, now I'm just going to follow the party since this room. Well, there is that. Oh, that's y'all guys are going through that door. Never mind. Yep, follow the party. 
All right, so you go past the pressure plate into the narrow hall. You guys are headed to the north. It opens up into a much longer hall. Um, all right. There's a detail here. Ooh, detail, please. It reminds you of the movie Indiana Jones. Okay, so when you get to the intersection here, you can see that the hall extends extremely far to the west, but it only extends about 15 feet to the east before it hits this big ornate door. Oh. We're going to go and investigate our way to the door. All right. So let's see if we walk on something or find something. That's better. Did we mm. find anything? So. Hang on. I'm trying to select this thing. Is this just another one, one of those? Um... Oh, boy. <laughs> Oh, I guess we ro we we saved our good roll for the clutch. <laughs> okay. So that's that. So if we find that, we're gonna not walk into it. So I guess we would stop here. It appears that there is a pressure plate that's in the hall here, and it uh, connects to this thing that's dangling above you. This enormous blade. Right here. Yep, right there. All right. Uh, Vrenta, it says it's disarmed just for efficiency's sake. I cloned one. Uh, Vrenta will attempt to disarm it again. All right. She, uh, checks us. Could I get another? What's your hoozle? Guidance. Guidance. Or more now that you're human again. Well, sort of human. He should be your counselor. Get it? Uh, uh, uh. Get I'm, I, I, I can't roll. Hold on a sec. There we go. Yay. Seven. Give this a shot. Um, How long has it been 20, since we fought the Drake? 25. Minutes. Yeah, okay. 10, 15 no, no, minutes. I'm still, uh, I'm still how you know. Okay. Well, Grimoire and Traxxas are here, too. One of them can be the guy. What guidance again? Well, every time I do one of these rolls, I'd like to have guidance. So, okay. power of should we just five. assume just, that when just, I'm trying uh, to disarm stuff, I have? Yeah. So, is 25 enough to disarm it? Oh, yeah. Easily. Pressure plate's right. not hard to disarm, but it does require a material of some sort to jam in there. I still have like eight or nine broken arrows. That'll work. And a hammer. What's and, this? Uh, what's this big old blade made out of? Uh, the giant blade above you is made of stone. Ah. A very heavy yeah. stone blade. It doesn't even look all that sharp, but just the 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 force of the weight and swinging down, it would cl cut somebody clear in half. All right. Well, we're gonna go and walk up and investigate our way towards it and investigate the door. Uh, ooh, 21. Damn, you got me again. Any more traps or locks on the door? All right, before stepping into this space, you notice that there's a bunch of holes in the floor. Punji stick trap, like a spear, raising spear trap type of deal. There's a bunch of holes in the floor, and inside each hole is a pointy little spear tip. Oh, all right. How does it look to be activated? Uh, gee, that's a good question. I mean, what I'm going to do depends on what I... 
Mm, dwarves don't do magic, so it's not a rune. It's got to be mechanical. Um, you don't see a pressure plate on the floor, but you do see the trap, the spear points and stuff. So maybe it's yeah. triggered by something else. Maybe the door. Perhaps it's the door. Um, hmm, how would I go about disarming this then? Hmm. So it's currently safe to stand in that space. Wow. In theory. Safe ish. <laughs> Unless something triggers the trap, in which case there will be spikes. All right. Can you guys hear me? Uh, we can now. Yeah, we now. Oh, I was saying I have a lead bar to use. Mm -hmm. Well, I said there's no pressure plate. There's something else yeah. that would activate this. I can throw it at the door. Bar. All right, throw it at the door. See if that does anything. It bounces right. off. Nothing happens. Okay. There you go. <laughs> uh, made a metal or the spikes are. It's a wooden door or a metal door? It is a big wooden door. Double doors. It's wooden. I'm just going to squeeze my way past here and just see if there's anything around here. Runs right into the next trap. I guess we're going to examine the door. Uh, oh. Ow. Does it just go all the way around? Mm, interesting. <laughs> We're going to take our time, since we're not walking, we're checking out the door. Let's see. Short rest? For all of it's us. It's not a bad idea, eventually. Doing anything? So, 22. Well, short rest, I think it's an hour. What's that? Checking the door? Yeah, checking the door, 22. All right. Yeah, there is a mechanical activation in the door handle. Okay, so I'm going... Disarming with these tools. Yeah, I'm going to take apart the door handle with these tools, I guess. It would probably be the most efficient way of dealing with that. Or when in doubt, use a long stick. I mean, that's possible too. I'd rather disarm it so that we don't keep having issues with this door. Because for all I know, there's a counterweight that resets it. Doors are crafty buggers. 28. All right. Yes, you disarm the trap. Is the door locked? No. We go through the door. Slowly and examining, examiningly as we do. Hmm. Well, sorry. What do we see when we open the door? Let me say that before we go through it. You see it. Um, wait, guys, there are options for a quiver of arrows on Hero Forge? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, there's. Brenta has one. I believe it's one of the back, like, backpack items. Um, is, do you know what is specifically titled in the search bar, or is it just literally quiver of quiver of air? I think it's just literally quiver. Just look up quiver. There we go. Thank you. If you put quiver of arrows, it might be too specific and not work. Is that exploding coin trap actually an exploding coin trap that was discovered, or is that just the icon for decorative purposes? Yeah, that's like wall art. Okay. The name was throwing me off, and I'm like, I didn't remember discovering another capital. Yeah, don't worry about that. Fair enough. Hmm. What's this thing we discovered? Or are you rolling to figure out what it is? Yeah, I'm generating a lot of stuff on the fly, so things might take a couple minutes. Oh, that's totally fine. RP amongst each other while I generate this thing that you found. I'm still questioning whose bones the are that, that this, these arrows are made from. Uh, 
Carenza? So I didn't catch what you said. Oh, whose bones are these? Oh, those are Tembo bones. Huh? Tembo. Remember we, we fought one in the gladiator pit and um, it when we went back to deal with the um, with the wraith uh, not the wraith but the what's the banshee or whatever it was the spirit the dwarf spirit uh, when we checked down there the tembo that we had previously killed at that point had decayed and rotted away so I scavenged some bones from it in order to later make some arrows when I bought a Fletcher's kit. Okay. So I've got a supply in uh, Degramont saddlebags of a few bones left. And so when I start running low, I make bows in my downtime. Like during a long rest, I can use a bone in my Fletcher's kit to make 20 arrows. Oh, how long is that giant worm going to be satisfied? Well, it what worm? Is it even? I have yeah. no idea what is a Flurgan? Flurgan, yeah. What? Basically. I don't know. Are you talking about the silk horror? The silk horror. It's the, yeah, that. Silt horror. It's like cat thing. From... Yeah, the Flurgan <laughs> is the cat that opens up into a tentacle maw that goes to another dimension. Wait, if I were to get eaten by it, I would go to a different dimension? Well, that's the idea oh. of the Flurgle. The Flurgle's mouth connects to a parallel dimension, which is why it can consume a near-infinite amount of food. Wow, that sounds like suffering. How does it not die? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> well, what it is, is the cat form, it's actually a six-dimensional creature. The cat form is just the part of it that happens to interact, intersect with 3D dimension. Ah, oh, okay. Okay. Uh, let me describe the room. So, uh, when you get past the, uh, the double doors, uh, it reveals an ornate room. The walls are incredibly decorative. There's a lot of uh, fancy artwork of dwarves. Uh, you see what appears to be very much like uh, Egyptian hieroglyphics, where it shows many dwarves in in uh, sort of uh, with their arms raised in the air and they're praising some sort of dwarven king. And the dwarven king holds a, mm -hmm. uh, a staff in his hand and he holds it above his head. Uh, it's an ornate looking staff. Uh, and then here in the room, at the back of the room, there's actually like a, like a stand. And on that stand, there is like a, like a, a weapon holder uh, display case sort of thing, and it's got uh, it's got a similar staff. It looks exactly like the one that's depicted in the artwork, the staff of the Dwarven King, and it seems to be towards the back of this room here in this back space. I hand Vrensa the uh, the Agari Long staff and say, "Use this to prop that towards you." Yeah, uh, slowly and carefully advance and check the room as we go and the stand for traps. All right. Then Traxxas turns to Morg and says, Morg, hold the door open, just in case. And just stand in the doorway with my body. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's do this slowly and carefully. So uh, let's get another guidance in here, if I could, please. All right, you have guidance. You also have reach with that long staff. Well, right now I'm just looking, just looking, and not doing. Uh, sixteen. Okay. Maybe yes, maybe no. So, uh, with a sixteen, you're gonna notice that along the ceiling there are uh, sort of like, hmm, how could I describe this? to draw a little diagram. Uh, bro. Let's see. So... So we're imagining this is the ceiling here, right? 
Boy, that's really thin looking. All right, so so imagine that the ceiling is uh, made up of blocks. Okay. Like. Like that. All right. So, and then right. there are like these little, little nubs sticking out along the ceiling. So it's a like stone that. fall trap. So you you have a feeling that this is a stone fall trap. There's some sort of little, little nubs sticking out that seem to be holding up the ceiling blocks. Okay. Um. Rensa is going to check the stand for mechanisms. The display case itself, all right. So uh, she does not have... Under guidance. She does not have a modifier, though, but she's probably going to be able to pick up things that, that the dog can't. So the last space where the staff is, there's no pins in the ceiling. It's only in the four spaces leading up to that space. Fifteen. Is there, are there any mechanisms that she can detect uh, with the fifteen in the uh, on the on the display case? Yeah, the display case itself seems to have some sort of lever attached to the to the case. So if you opened the case, it would definitely trigger something. Okay. Okay. Uh... So it's what is it? Glass display case. Uh, the display case appears to be made out of crystal. You can see through it. It's All like right. a cylinder of crystal with a staff inside the cylinder of crystal. Brent is going to back up. But the cylinder of crystal is like hemispherical, and it opens up. Oh, I know. Or, I, I, I understand. Hemis, hemicylindrical is is that a word? Yeah. <laughs> so Brent is going to back up. And she, she she's gonna explain what she found in the other in the other side and Brenta has an idea. So she's like, all right, there's a stonefall trap in here. And clearly there's a, and that, that display case, that hemispherical display case has a uh has a mechanism attached to it. Whoever opens it, it's probably gonna drop those stones in. That's either gonna squish them or potentially trap them in, depending on how big those blocks are. Oh, well, it, it could just it. seal them in forever. Well, I mean, you could tunnel so, through twenty feet of stone, but it would take you a long time. Right. So, so I've got a couple ideas of what we could do. Could but break first into of all, the case we from the back. The side right. Well, what I. Open. Right, so what I'm thinking is we've got that lead bar. I can tie my silk rope to it because that's very light, and we just keep yeeting the lead bar at the crystal so it cracks, and then we can just take the staff out. Um, or it triggers the trap, in which case then we, it, if the blocks are huge and block the hallway, we're going to have some mining to do. Uh, I can try to disarm it, but if that fails, then you guys are gonna have to rescue me before I ever run out of air. Again, if that's the worst case scenario. I think regardless of what we do before we decide it though, maybe we need to retreat back to this room here, since that seems relatively safe, and perhaps at least do a short rest. If not, I don't know how long how long have we been up at this point? What did we would it be apropos to have a long rest at this point? Hmm. You were traveling. Uh, you were traveling to get to the mountains here where you entered into the dungeon, so it probably could be, you know, afternoon or nighttime. It wouldn't be out of the ordinary to rest. What is that? So we could, of? we could camp, you know, we could backtrack all the way out to our thing, although we'd be passing the silt whore again. We could take a short rest here, or we could try closing the doors and risking taking a long rest down Maybe here. Maybe not. Defendant. There is this third door that we didn't take a look at, and it might be a back passageway. It could, but it could also unleash more things. I mean, health-wise, I think we're relatively healthy, but we've used up a lot of our 
you know, magical resources to get this far. I you agree. get magical powers back when you do a short rest? Yes. Long rest. Well, wild, some people do. Wild shape does come back after a short rest. Yeah. Does rage come back after a short rest? No. No, it needs a long rest for rage. So I don't get my spell slots back either. So I don't think anybody gets spell slots back because we don't have any wizards or warlocks. So yeah, the question is, is and and uh, yeah, Traxus gets their you and Traxus would get your wild shapes back, and anybody who's short on HP, which might just be Daggermaw, can uh, use some hit die. So. I, th I think we need a long rest. Do we want to backtrack all the way back up to our stuff on the outside, like our 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 carts and our tanks, Thanks. and then because that's going to require to do two passages through the silt horror room. Or we just uh, rest by the uh, elevator and we guard. Or rest by the elevator and hope that our kinks and everything else is safe for a whole night. Mm. See, that's a trade off. Or we do a short rest and keep exploring and hope we have a back way to get back to the entrance that bypasses the silk war room. I'll remind you guys of a detail from last week. Uh, there is a red drake mama hunting for her baby for food in the region just outside of uh, the dungeon here. Hey, how about we it make it fight the... Tanks. It might eat your kanks if they're there for very long. How about long. we make it fight the silk line? So, what do you guys... So, so those are our options. I think they're all very valid. I think the smartest option, even though it doesn't get us back all of our spells, might be to just take a short rest, let our druids kind of get back some of their their, their, their wild shape resources, let Daggermaw heal a little bit, and then come back and try to get the staff. Yeah, that's I'm all right with that. Could use, Heck, uh, if it's just a short idea. rest, we can just stay here in this hallway, honestly. Like, druids gain uh, spell slots back after a short rest? No, oh, they gain a wild shape back. Oh, uh, okay. Does Bardic Inspiration come back after a short rest? I don't know, that's your class thing. Read it. Yeah. <laughs> know your class, dude. Probably not. Not trying to be rude, but yeah. I'm, I'm wondering what was more risky to crack the, the casing and still activating the trap or trying to deactivate it? What, what I'm afraid of is that those blocks, that Stonefall trap, is big enough to actually seal off that area, kind of like an entombing kind of thing, rather than just a crushing. And the reason I think that is that the, the, the square right before the case does not have a trap above it. I don't know. It's the, the, last, last... the last square with the case in it does not have any pins in the ceiling that you can see. It's only the four squares leading up to that last one. I'm just wondering if right. it retracts. So there's like 20 feet of uh, pinned ceiling blocks and then one regular ceiling block. Right, right. So that's what I'm afraid of is that it, it it's more made to seal somebody in with yeah, their like, treasure. They wouldn't want to crush their king staff. Yeah. So that, that square damage. doesn't take any yeah. damage. <laughs> so, so the two options are I try to disarm the trap <laughs> and hopefully don't fail. Don't or we try to. Crowbar. Oh yeah, I've got crowbar. I've got a hammer. I've got all sorts of breaking and entering tools. Yeah, you could definitely use the crowbar and the hammer to try and chip through the crystal on the back side. On the well, on the side of the hemisphere that does not open. The crystal case only has about ten hit points. It could be shattered. Right. The thing that I don't know is if shattering it also triggers the mechanism or not. That's why I was suggesting if we're breaking the crystal, I'm wondering that if it's not easy we, to just try to block the the ceiling tiles from falling. With we need to get some timbers, some really strong timbers that would be able to hold the weight of God knows how many pounds of rock. 
Or jammed up mechanism. Yeah, what does Again, a 5x5 five right. five of granite weigh? <laughs> right. The, the, the thing with jamming the mechanism is if I fudge my these to a roll, I could be crushed or entombed. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so. Sol, do you have any more castings of Bardic Inspiration? I already have one. No, you have Guidance. No, and I have a Bardic Inspiration. That's what that bless over my head is. Oh, gotcha. Because there's not a token for Bardic Inspiration. So how badly do we want this staff? I mean, it seems right. it seems pretty important. Yeah, it's behind a lot of protection, and the right. way normally will keep. So that's why I was suggesting we take that lead bar, tie the silk rope to it, and just keep throwing it at the the crystal till it breaks. If it doesn't trigger the trap, we're okay. If it does, we can still get to it by mining to it without risking anybody's life. Well, Morg's yeah. got the best arm, so. He's the one who's going to have to throw the lead bar. 500 pound stone right. blocks. That's what it says here. So. That's heavy. The, the downside of that arrow. is if it does trigger the trap, we could be out here for quite a long time mining through it to to get to it. You might be able to uh, just hit it with bow and arrow until it shatters. Can I use I mean, the then, his bow, then his arrows would be gone. Uh, oh, that's but uh, well, we can get more of those. We can get more arrows. I mean, I could just do that. Hey, don't I have those uh, a box of uh, those uh, stone uh, dwarven arrowheads? Yep. Can I screw those onto the tip of my bone arrows? More or less, like a fix them. I've got the Fletcher's kit. I've got the tools to do it during the short rest. Sure. All right, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to point away at the crystal till it breaks. All right, you take a bunch of shots at the crystal. Eventually, it shatters. Uh, mere moments after the uh, the crystal case shatters, a bunch of bunch of uh, pins pop up from the the bottom of it, and then all the pins in the in the ceiling shoot out under high pressure. And then all the ceiling blocks begin to collapse. Four big giant 500 pound stone blocks drop into the hall. Do they completely block the hall like I was afraid of? Yes. Ah. I wanted to try something. I wanted to put a noose with a rope as soon as it break pool on the staff. Before but we can't attach anything to the staff. It's behind the crystal. No, but you put it around the, the case, and you know, when it breaks, you pull, and it grabs the staff. I think give me two All more right. levels, and we could get through it, because then I'd have stone shape. <laughs> well, here, yeah. we've got the miners pick. Let's take turns. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> let's let's emulate the dwarves. Until we get it? I no, mean, I don't want to. I don't want to leave this behind. I'm, yeah, but you know what? There's one thing is that if this. I mean, are we gonna go and like get our tanks first before the dragon outside comes and sees them and eats them? The tanks aren't gonna fit here. Uh, Ninja, little hmm. question. Now, this these blocks here that fell uh, down, okay? They um, can fit in this big space. Like, are they much much taller than that the space that it blocks? The hallway is five by five, yeah. uh, no, wait, no, and the, the blocks one. are four point nine nine by four point nine nine. Okay. It's a tight fit. Oh, so we don't necessarily so have to slide them. Yeah, so what we can do is dig at the top of it, and then walk at the at the top of the rocks, and then dig our way down to the other side. Uh, and, and instead of that, might be longer than going through the blocks. But you know what might be better? No, no, I still because, because above the rocks, you'll have an empty void. Yeah, and he's got a point there. To, oh. You just need to dig to the void, and then you walk through that. So instead of digging 20 feet, you technically only have to dig up one, and then uh, one when down. you get 20 Please feet throw. across, one across. Yeah. 
Oh my god, you're a genius, Grimoire. Yeah, we can use the empty space. So rather than days of digging or hours and hours, it's really going to be minutes of digging through into the void and then through the other side. Okay. Yeah. So... You don't even really have to dig down the other end. You just get like a rope or kind of jump down. Like what? It's only like 20 feet? Five, uh, five that feet. blocked up the ceiling? Five, six feet. Oh, five feet. Okay. I see a slight problem with this, though. What's that? What if they carved these out longer than uh, than just the amount of space it takes? Up no, the blocks are smaller no, than the space just... in the room. Right, he just said they're five by five by five blocks. Just okay. short of that so that they fit in the gap. Yeah. Okay. Right. So above them, way. like Grimorne said, there's going to be a 5x5x20 oh, by five by cavity. Where they used to cavity. Be. Yep. So instead of digging through them, we just need to dig up into that cavity, walk across, and then back down into the void where the uh, bath is. It takes okay. a long time. You do have to mine through about 10 feet of stone, but eventually you manage it. In Traxxas, take a short rest while you guys mine through it. Yeah. Yeah. You could probably cut corners a little bit more if you had somebody crawl through narrow holes. Then you'd probably only. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do, I don't know, like... Send Vin over there. Get, 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 get the staff. Coil three... around it. Bring it up. Bring it up. <laughs> you could Vin probably get away can't... with three feet of stone on either side. Vin can't climb walls. No, but Vrensa can shimmy. She's pretty skinny. All right, you've retrieved the Dwarven Staff of Kings. Woohoo! Okay, me and Trex is okay. going long rest. Who wants to have an unidentified staff that is probably enchanted somehow? I'll take the staff. I'm the one who uses what? staffs mainly anyway. I could use that too. I'll let you, you two can, fight over it. You'd have the Agarti long staff. You'd have reach. I am now a medium creature. I don't need reach. I use produce frames while we walk in the dungeon. What is the staff made of? The staff <laughs> appears to be made out of a combination of materials. There's some oak, like the bulk of the staff is made of oak. However, it is banded in a variety of precious metals. So it's got like rings. It's got a variety of metal rings running the length of it. And uh, each metal ring has a, a band of dwarven text. There's a variety of writing and dwarven artwork around each band. So Was they're there... not illiterate like us? No, yeah. they, they have a complex dwarven language that nobody here can speak or read. Was there anything else in the display case, perhaps, under the staff, like a key? Um, There was no key in here, no. Nah. You'll find the keys are each in the possession of a dead dwarf. You've only found one so far. All right. So I guess this way is next, right, guys? Yep. Or we can take a look at the long, at the end of this corridor as well. It circles back around. Do we know that? Not yet. Uh, we did see a door that was on the other end of the no, silver no, when we, we were we on the other end. end. We don't know what's around the corner. We haven't been there. Yeah. Well, I, think, uh, right. I think Morg's we're only a little. Morg's only gotten to the end end of the hall and saw that it wrapped around. Oh, okay. All right. Well, let's go because yeah, you're right. It, without metagaming, we would be exploring down that route. So I'll say at the point where you get, I don't know, maybe like here, you'll see that this is that hallway that looks like it's about ready to just collapse. There's rubble everywhere from parts of the wall and ceiling that have already collapsed, and everything else is fractured and broken. Very oh, I need to spend some uh, hit dice for Dagger Maw. So, All right. just with yeah. your passive perceptions, you guys can tell that this hallway looks mighty dangerous to travel through. I actually uh, just need to use one. Um, Traxxas, like, if there's, like, metal on this stuff, can you use it still? 
Because if not, then <clears throat> if you can, use it. But if you can't, then I'll use it. Or I'll try to figure out what it does. I mean, honestly, what is metal but just another part of the natural earth? <laughs> okay. <laughs> don't don't try to get around your class. <laughs> yeah, I was just trying to figure out a way to maneuver. Right? It's all atoms at the end of the day. This dungeon crawling is bringing back. Uh, if you dungeon. can, but if you can't. Druids don't use metal. It's a metal staff. It's. Okay, it's like the de staff. the description says that it is a oak quarter staff. So mechanically, you can use it. the uh, The description right. I'm giving is mostly ornamental. It's like uh, All right. appearances. I well, why wanted, don't we identify it first and then? I just wanted to stand out as a fancy staff. The best way to make something look fancy in Dark Sun is to make it have some metal elements to it. Was. Was the long rest long enough for me to try to do an arcana check on this ring? Sure. After the Unmodified long rest, arcana. After the long rest, 11. you're able to attune to it, and once you've attuned to it, and with an 11, you sort of get an idea of how to activate it with a bonus action. Wait, you took a long rest? No, short. A short rest is long enough to attune to an item. Wait, so Grimoire was the one doing all the digging? No, we did the short rest first because I had to... Uh, uh, we were doing... We we didn't dig first. We took the short rest, then I fired the arrows to break the thing. Oh, okay. So you took two short rests, while we're, one while we are digging. I'm not sure the purpose of the second one. I didn't, I didn't know we were taking a short rest. Did the uh, did did yeah. the silkworm did it eat the creature that came back, or is it out at this point? Well, uh, after an hour, uh, it did emerge during that hour and consumed the body. Do so if we're lucky, it's satiated. So you guys, some of you have moved back into the uh, the large room with the elevators. Yeah. Are you planning to open the third door? Quick question, Ninja. With uh, since aberrations are one of my favorite enemies, do I know enough about silt horrors to estimate how long this thing might be satiated for eating a meal that smith? Uh, you would be aware that silt horrors have an endless hunger and it probably could eat uh, like a dozen more of those so tell the party well you know in hindsight it's probably still hungry but it would Maybe be we should have fed the drake less hungry than it was at least <laughs> it went from being starving to just being kind of hungry So if there's anybody else want to play the crash test dummy or shall I keep going ahead? You've been there like, well so far. Alright. We'll give you guidance again. Ah, uh, we will. I'll put dim light on the doorway. I will uh, check the... Did we already examine this doorway? Was it safe? And oh, we have not. Traxxas is not intelligent to do that. All right. Uh, let's see. So Renzo will go and examine the hallway, or not the hallway, the door itself, or any mechanisms and locks. Uh, twenty-one. Ooh, good roll. Arcana check. <laughs> so, uh, checking over no. the door, it doesn't appear no. to have any traps or triggers, pressure plates or, or trip kinda... wires. Nothing of that sort. The 21 was not an arcana check. The 11 was an arcana check. Yeah. So nothing. All right. Uh, Dagamo leads the way, I guess, to the next doorway, and she will do her normal scratch sniff. She wins the lotto. All right. Let's see. How does it work? So, getting past the first door, it doesn't seem to have any trap. It enters into a long hallway. Uh, All right. And then there's another door right here. 
The door is uh, considerably far down a long hall. You're walking towards it for a while. Huh? It doesn't seem to be oh, getting dear. closer. Oh, goodness. All right. Mm, After a while, I, mean, I, I suggest ahead. everybody move out for a moment. Can we move it. out? Or is the other door equally receding from us? Now, if you've turned around to look at the other door, the other door seems pretty far away at this point. I'm and say start the, walking back towards the other door. The door you came in from is at least 30 feet behind you. And the door in front of you feels like it's at least 30 feet ahead. If we walk back towards the door we came from, is it get closer? You walk towards the door for an unusual amount of time. It doesn't seem to get closer. Oh man. I feel very familiar with this. <laughs> yeah, you've dealt with this trap before. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, try and get as far away from me as possible so that I can try and use the spell magic without uh, accidentally destroying any other magical items that we have. Well, the spell magic doesn't destroy magic items in fifth edition. Oh, this it, only works, it only works on spells. It does not work on magic items. Okay, well. Doesn't it suppress since... them temporarily? Uh, I don't even know if it does that, honestly. Let me look it up. Well, regardless, I do see that we're definitely going to have to use a dispel magic. Um, hold on. Mm, yeah, so... I guess it's just spells. Yeah, it, I don't think it would work out. If magic item, it would, like, dispel the spell from the magic item. Spell effects of third level or lower. Magic item. Well, it does say choose one yeah. creature, object, or magical effect, so... I choose the magical effect of the never-ending hallway. Ah, hmm. uh, creature... So I guess we might not be... No, able to... any third level or lower on the target end. So if there's a spell on the creature target or magical effect. So I guess as long as it's just like an enchantment and it's not being created by a magic item in the hallway, it would work. But it's not a blast. So it's, it, you, you have to target it. So our, our magic items are good it's not like an aoe like everything magical stops working yeah that's a that that's, was a concern uh, factor. it's not gonna work because you don't have a target you can't target the hallway itself can i move away from traxxas let's say traxxas stay still and i try to move back towards the door we came from what do i observe happening mm, perspective is distorted you don't seem to be moving further away so I, even though I'm walking, it's like I'm moonwalking in place. Like I'm, look like I'm going forward, but I'm actually still standing right next to Traxxas. Yes. Huh. Well, this is bizarre. I'm in the doorway. What do I see them doing? Okay. Um. So Morg and Creus are looking through the doorway. You didn't go in. So everybody walked into the room and stopped. Nobody's moved for a bit. Are we reacting or are we just stone still? To to an outside observer, you all appear to have just gone into a standing coma. All of them? I... I'm Is there anything in this room that's just like loose, myself. like a rock or something? Uh... No, I don't think there is. I'm going to. You could go. Uh, you could go through the secret door over to there. There's some rubble. For what? He's looking for something to throw in there. I think. Uh, yeah, I want to throw something at them. <laughs> I think my old spear, the spear to. Uh... There's some bones. You could throw dwarf yeah. bones. Take the spear. Yeah, I, I, I get dwarf bones and I just start chucking it at them, seeing if they react to it. Mm -hmm. 
All right. A bunch of dwarf bones are going to hit Traxxas in the back of the head. Um, you get a <laughs> intelligence save to disbelieve the illusion because you've been interacted with. Oh, I actually have advent. I actually have uh, proficiency with that. I've been putting stuff in the chat, um, Ninja. Uh, Me. So, so, well, that, that's out of character, but in terms of in character, Vrens is trying to figure out what magic might be at play in Rules and Arcana check. 20. 20. Arcana. Okay. Um, Traxxas, you get hit by some dwarf bones, and you suddenly, like, snap out of it. Although you're... you're uh, your senses are a little bit foggy. Your mind feels clouded. You can see that hovering above everybody in this hallway, there's like a floating psionic crystal. And there's like waves of energy emanating off of it. And everybody else is just standing there drooling. Hmm. Okay. Can, do we observe that from the outside? Yes, you guys can see it. The crystal. Now, I know that the... I, I, as a character, would know that there is a difference between magic and psionics, correct? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so then the only way to really take care of this is... The I... What, what kind of spells do I have? I try a firebolt on one of those crystals. Oh, you can't see the crystal, though. I'll, I can see the crystal because I'm actually inside the hallway. It's it's above our heads, so it's out of eyesight of you. I thought the I would ninja assume. said that. I thought ninja, ninja just said they could see it, too. Oh, okay, okay. Um, yeah, I'm wondering well, how that works. It's probably invisible from the outside. Okay. Oh, never mind. Okay. Can we do an arcana check? I'm sorry about well, this, Renza, but it's got to be done. Is that... Uh, is that... Um, well, did my 16 do anything? Well, well, before, did, did my 16 do anything to try to figure out what was going on? Uh, oh, yeah, you were, you were rolling Arcana to see if you could figure out the... It's a psionic effect what? equivalent to an 8th level maze spell, Conjuration. So, Brenta knows it's some form of maze spell. I think I remember how to A do powerful that. conjuration spell. Okay. Wait, where so, am I? So... But it's a psionic effect. It doesn't actually conjure anything. Nobody actually goes anywhere. It's all in your head. Right. It sends your mind okay. to another place, to a labyrinthine zone where you can't seem to actually get anywhere. Again, Vern, that... I apologize no for this, but I'm going to be using Thunder Wave. Well, do I get a chance to do a save to break out of it first before you do that? Uh, nobody can tell what's going on unless they've had reason to make the intelligence check against the illusion. Wait, Ninja, well, where am I? Doesn't my arcana check reason to make an intelligence check? And also that you're walking around in a hallway where just distance is distorted. Yeah, there's some magic in in, in play here. The uh, psionics are hampering your effect, okay. your your ability to to reason. Sort of like when, when so you're in, like when you're in a dream and you can't realize you're in a dream, even though it's really obviously a dream when you think about it after the fact. It's sort of like that. Yeah. So I'm gonna try and thunder wave this crystal to try and destroy it. Okay. Yeah. Um. Once you are aware of it and do anything to it, you can destroy it pretty easily. It's quite flimsy. It shatters. The effect ends. So, How much damage does Brenta say take? Uh, and dagger ball. I mean, because we're gonna we auto fail our save, we can't. We're unaware, so we're gonna auto fail. Roll it down. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hold Pop. On. Does then explode? Boom. <laughs> I have to check my so my spell again. A thunderous wave, fifteen foot cube, two d eight. Ninja, am I still in the dungeon? Uh, 2d8, and you get pushed 10 feet towards the other door. Oh, good. Mm, you are. So, how much? Snake guts everywhere. Um. Oh, poor Vin. Vin's gonna get squished by that. 
unless you roll really uh, no. low. Vin is, Vin is a part of the epicenter, so he won't get harmed. Wait, yeah, we're in. Oh, oh we're not 14. there. That hurts. Did Soul get deleted? What happened here? Yeah, Soul is gone. I just got erased from existence temporarily. Don't mind it. Yeah, somebody managed to delete all three of you. <laughs> it's probably me. Oops. Uh, is it board frozen again? Oh, it there was. You go. So 14. That hurt. Ow. Vrensa and Daggermaw wake up in a huddle next to the door. Blood on their asses. What happened to you? Ow! Hell! Ow! Sorry, Vrensa. It was necessary. I don't think the others were able to see it, but I was able to see the little crystal hanging above our heads that was messing with our heads. You all Probably right? Probably should I have thrown cast, more uh, bones at Vrensa. I also oh. cast a, uh, a, a spell slot of Cure Wounds at second level. Okay, so uh, right. yeah, I spawned in a new figurine for you. Where do you want to be? Uh, I'm just gonna be um, the, the square in front of the door, probably. All right, so you're over here next to Creus, next to Grimorn and Morg, looking in the room where everybody was brainwashed. Oh come on! Well, you heal back six damage, Rensa. All right, I'll take that. That's it. supposed to be three D eight. I need an additional D eight in there. Okay, so right. thunder wave. Everybody takes the pop. Everybody is awoken from the illusion. Now you can see that there's a door just ahead of you. Use a third level spell slot. I used a second level spell slot. Is it only one D eight plus one D eight per extra level? Oh yeah, it? then it's yeah, just yeah, that. So let's see, so 13, so I was at 30. Wait, no, it's 14 damage. So I was at 29. So 6 gives me to 35. Okay. Uh, yeah. um, Sorry. Brent is going to use her last two spell slots to cast another Cure Light Wounds on herself and one on Dagger Maul. Okay. Healing all around. I mean, it's the best use of her spells at this point right now so on herself she gets back 10 and on dagger maw gets back six all right not great but it is well it's enough to get friends back to full and would you like dagger some maw. berries healing berries uh, Daggermar could use six. What's yeah, that the end of the proverbial magical tunnel? That's the real question. Yes, it is. Do you have six berries left? Uh, I don't think I have any, like, on me, but I can make some. Sure. Okay, I'll use the first I, little I spell slot and make ten berries. If you, need, if you need the, uh, mistletoe component. Yeah, me too. I have it. I have okay. a component pouch. Component pouch, I right. well, I give six berries to Dagger Ma. Your oh, no, 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 no. hand is just completely covered in uh, lizard dog saliva, but she's super happy. Her little stubby tail is just thumping on the floor like a mile a minute. Can I, can I, I give an apologetic head. pat to, uh, to Dagger Ma? Oh, yeah. She's very happy. Be happy to see you too. The real question is, did your snake explode? No. He says the snake's on, on him. Oh, yeah. it's counting as an object, huh? Gotcha. Yeah, I can I can have Vin wrapped around either my leg or my arm. Makes sense. He probably doesn't move super fast on his own, right? As a tiny little guy. Yep. Exactly. Very. Actually, I could just wear Vin as a belt. <laughs> Snakeskin belt? I think it'd be sexier if he was just wrapped around your neck, kind of like as a choker. You just put him you down mean, your pants? You mean like a feather boa? 
Let's hang it down your pant leg. So a real deal trousers thing. Yep. <laughs> okay. So before you is a wooden door. Are you going to examine it? Yes. Are you going to throw caution uh, to the wind and jump through the doorway without checking first? <laughs> no. I'm going to ask for another guidance and check the door or locks and traps. Like the previous door, it doesn't appear to be locked. Uh, but it's only a nine. And it doesn't I'm appear to be sure trapped no either. Lock. So yes, Brent uh, will open the door. You open the door. There was no trap. Uh, beyond the door, there's a large room. And what does it look like? Oh, wow. Are we really 20 minutes in the night? Yeah. It was that late start. You know, I had a cup of coffee, and I'm, like, super wired, and I'm, like, normally right now, I'd be falling asleep, and I'm not. <laughs> I had two cups of coffee and an energy drink. But I do right. have to work tomorrow, so I will try to go to bed. Yeah, yeah. Well, we still got 20 minutes, so let's do this. Oh, no, no, no. Here. I don't mean right now. I was just saying in, in general. <laughs> so what's in the magical tunnel? Magical. Watch the room just before the trap. So we're, we're able to get in the room after all? Yep. Yes. We nice. were. Nice. Nice work. We're about to get the room description yeah. once the uh, ninja rolls it up. We went through a lot of uh, traps tonight. Like, everything was a, a trap tonight. That's the nature of this dungeon. It is <laughs> a like... big trap dungeon. There's the poison door, there's the trap, there's the elevator, then there's the uh, way to the to the staff, and then this one. Would I be able to tell that this do that this wall here connects to this room here? Like, do I have enough... Uh, uh, the sense in we're in our position to be able to tell that. So, the the way to do that really would be like to to have a a mapper. So somebody in the party says like I have chalk and a piece of paper and I'm drawing a map as we go, and then you can look at the map and say all right because I drew a map I know that this room has like a wall a thin wall between this room and that other room we were in before. Okay. Yeah, That's how you can rationalize it to where you can just say, yeah, I would know that there's this other room across this wall here. So my ranger navigation abilities would not be sufficient since we're in a dungeon then? Well, I mean, it's good. It's good that you have that, but like, you should probably at least have some map making materials so that you can plot it out. None of us are literate. We are leaving we can't. Track marks, so... Hmm? Well, sorry. None of us except Traxxas are literate. Uh, literacy doesn't matter for drawing pictures. You can you can draw a no. map just by drawing lines. That's uh, uh, that doesn't require anything. Right, but I guess what I'm trying to say is I don't think any of us brought pen and paper in order to do so. Right. Um. I mean, you could just do it from a uh, from memory with an int check, I guess, but it would be harder. Right. I could use the back of my. I mean, of course, I can, you know, just muddle it out later by using my ritual to uh, on, uh, for my slab of stone that I use as my star map. But we could use yeah. the back of the stone uh, with the... But we'd be retconning a hell of a lot to say at this point that you've been doing a map this whole time. We could have been, but I don't exactly like the thought of my star map being used or cut as into. A map. Yeah. Alright, well... We'll just have to do an int check later. Because I was just thinking, if we can, if I, if Renza can suss out that this is a thin wall, she's going to suggest digging through it to avoid the or and create a way to get back to the entrance. But let's see what's in the room first, and if Renza's got bigger things to fish to fry. All right. So you find what appears to be a common room, and there are dwarven stone beds. Like 
a barracks? Yeah, like a barracks. So let's see. We got uh, stone beds along the walls, like so. Is there a well in here too? Possibly, maybe, hopefully. What's with you in wells? Water. <laughs> You do realize the setting we're playing in, right? Water yeah. is worth its weight in gold around here. So if I br water brings five gallons of water... Oh! How do we even afford barrels of water? <laughs> water is not literally worth its weight. Wait, Ninja, how much would we make if we were to sell just a barrel of water? A lot. <laughs> Okay. You find an old dwarven barracks. Um, there are stone beds scattered around. Uh, there's a variety of containers, although they are old and decayed. Many falling apart, worm-eaten. All right. Well, Griff is going to walk in with uh, Dagger Maw when she sees it's a common room. If she remembered last time we found a common room, there weren't any traps inside, so she's going to go on the basis that they probably don't trap where they sleep. She's going to walk in. All right. You're in a large common chamber. And before exploring anything, I'm going to try to see, it, do what I was talking about before, see if Brenta realizes, and I'll do an in check and see if she realizes that this is a thin wall. So I had no modifier, so that's just going to be a stone cold in check. Okay. Oh, you could do perception. I have the lead bar with me. If uh, but he says, a... right? I mean, but it, I mean, dependent on if it's a thicker wall versus a thinner wall, there should be a change in tone. But first, Brent has to realize that we're half circled back, and he said that if we're not using a map, it, she ha I have to do an intelligence check to see if ah. I can. Have, okay. If I if I have the mental map, so to speak. So that's an 11. So I don't know if that's enough to suss out that we're, we've cast circled back without a map or not. Mm, 11's not great. I'm going to say you are off by... Eh, you're only off by 5 feet. Okay, so I have a fair idea that there's some there's something on this other side of this wall than over here. Yeah, if you're only off by 5 feet, you could say like you were aiming for this square and you would have got... This yeah. square or this square. And it still works. All right. All right. This is going to point over here, um, and she's going to point to the wrong wall over here and say, I think this is the middle of that room, that small alcove that used to be by the statue room. So she thinks it's this wall, but it's really this wall. Or I should say, she thinks this wall here is the one in the middle. But she's, she's close enough. I mean, basically, we made to, a U-turn. We did. If we want to spend the time, this wall shouldn't be too thick. We we could, if we want to spend the time to dig, we could get circle around and have a path that completely avoids that silt bore. Yeah, we do. Still we got lucky there. last time. What's that? No, I we do. I'm just saying if we if we find no. Yeah, if we find nothing, if we find no other way to circle back other than the silk horror, we have options. Okay. Over here, there's a door, but the door, if I can get this to function right, the door is broken down, laying on its side in the doorway. Ooh, there's another dwarf skeleton. Maybe he's going to be too. Is that what you were about to do? Go for it. Go for yeah, it, Yeah, I, I was going to have a look around, and if I noticed the skeleton, I was going to check it out. All right. Checking the skeleton, uh, you'll find that it is a well-dressed skeleton. It appears to be in the robes of a dwarven priest, a religious figure of some kind. 
Around his neck, he has a similar cord with a key hanging from it. To the other well-dressed uh, dwarven noble that you found in the elevator shaft. I will take the key and whisper a uh, a silent, uh, a, a soft apology to the skeleton, and uh, wishing wishing them whatever afterlife they're in a happy afterlife. Two out of three. One more key to go. Is there anything else in the room? Oh yeah, lots of stuff. I put everything on the map here so you have some idea where the details are. What are you doing whispering to that dwarf? What are those stone things uh, near the wall? That's that's no way to celebrate a dwarf. Those are beds. Grab, I grab the uh, yeah, stone? drum set. The dwarves sleep on stone on beds. Yep. Jesus Christ! Did that's, you ever play Skyrim? Uh, <laughs> yes, I did. But... Those beds in Skyrim look so uncomfortable. <laughs> what is it you're exactly rolling for there, uh, Long? Performance on the drums. All right, you start Guys. banging the drums. Guys, I'm I'm gonna go now. You gotta okay, go. Yeah, we're about, right. we're about to wrap this up. Thanks All for being right. here. See, see you next week. Three keys. I'll see you guys next week. I already get wait. Got to put it in one of my pockets. These are drums too. Where I'm standing. Mm, where are you? I'm going. So uh, over here by this wall here, these are a variety of cookware. So there's bowls and plates and other dishes here variety of fine china. It's cumbersome and fragile, but you could take it. It might be worth something. I'll skip. Adventuring with a bunch of china plates is uh, yeah. <laughs> tricky. Not the best idea. Is there anything else, like uh, boxes or anything to go towards? Yeah, yeah. There's barrels. There's crates. Uh, there's a vase in the corner. What was the vase? What does it look like? So you go over here, and there's a dusty old vase. Um, but it's uh, it's decoratively painted with dwarven uh, dwarven characters and runes. Can I open it? Uh, it is just a vase, so it's like open on top, and you can look down in there. There's nothing inside. If it held there, a liquid at one point, there. it must have evaporated. So is everything empty? Uh, if you look in the box at your feet there, it's uh, decayed and fallen apart. There might have been food contained within, but it's all rotted away a long time ago. So this is almost just like a kitchen over here. Well, it was a common place. area. There was a bunch of uh, you know common stuff that you'd use in day-to-day life. Musical instruments, uh, cookware, food supplies, beds, all that normal stuff. Rinsa checks the vase. Uh, well, well, Grimorne just looked at that and didn't see anything special. Oh. I checked the beds on this side, then. Technically, the vase is an art object, but it's quite large. Anything in the beds, then? Uh, the beds don't contain anything of value. I peek around this corner through the broken door. Do I, what do I see? Mm. Climbing over the broken door, and you see a hallway that extends to the south. It's got a couple of side passages. Has anyone checked this cup? No. I'll do that. All right. I was. Yep. Oh, were you about to? Sorry. No, 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 no. I was about to check the other pottery in the room once you're. Oh, okay. There's more pottery. You pick up a dusty cup with flaking paint, flaking away from it. Under the paint, you can see what appears to be gold. I pocket that shit. Yeah, that's a dwarven cup. It's worth uh, 25 gold. Twenty five gold? Uh ceramic pieces, sorry. Oh okay. 
I, I, I got hella excited there for a sec. <laughs> 25 um, gold. It's like the fucking holy grail. Uh, let's, let's add that to the loot. Uh, let's see. You know what's funny? If that cup were actually made out of silver, the dwarves could have made silver colloid. Silver what now? Colloidal colloid. silver? Yeah, colloidal silver. All right. Do, so moving to do the end. Do our of the objects sell for their full value? Yeah, yeah, they do. Okay. So, uh, Morg, you move to the end of this hall. Uh, at the end of a long, narrow passage, you see the back end of a secret passage. You guys didn't see it on the other side, but from this side, it's more obvious. So, there's an entrance that connects to that other hall over there. Okay, well, that's not left, so I keep wandering down the hallway. All right. Well, when you get to the intersection here, you can see into a familiar-looking room. I thought that door was closed. Is it? Should be. That's yeah, a locked it, door it, it with the open. three that's keys. That's why we went the other way. So we went all the way around and we never needed the keys. Mm, you found the back side of a door. I remember Unless it opens whatever this is. is. So next to the door here, there's uh, three holes in the wall. Oh. I don't remember where this goes. <laughs> but you do see the keyholes right here, man. I do? Okay. I'll let you guys know this is where the keys are destined for. All right. They can open both the door and the wall here, if you have all three. Well, we found a way back out, right? Are you gonna tell us about the secret door over here? Yeah. yeah. All I, right. I can see an extra bulgy door that we didn't see going up around the other way. The back side of a false wall, obvious from this side, but well hidden from the other. Renzo vaguely remembers that we had found uh, a, a door at one point, a secret door frame, but we couldn't figure out how to open the secret door. She kind of wonders aloud, maybe this is the other side of them. Was it that one? Yeah, it is. Out of character, it is. But Brenta doesn't know that 100% at this point. Yeah, I wasn't taking careful notes. Um, okay. Should we call it there? It's 11.56? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's been fun. That's D&D &D for tonight. We'll pick up again next Wednesday. Thanks we for watching out there. We didn't do a short rest in that other room. We could have had beds to sleep on in here. <laughs> stone beds. I don't know what's worse, stone bed or nothing. Uh, I mean, the ground uh, is basically a big stone bed, right? Smooth. Yeah. I'd rather sleep on grass than a stone bed. I, I still can't believe Rens is the only one who brought bed rules. Everybody else is used to roughing it. <laughs>